we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Okay, let's continue. Uh, so where were we? We're currently headed towards Penium. Uh, I think this was because we missed a single, uh, underground belt. And by the time, by the time I read it, after chat caught it, I'd taken off. Um, didn't have enough fuel to come back here. So, this is cramping our style just a little bit. Um, slowing down our Vitamelange, which we just upgraded quite a lot. Um, we can get 204 core fragments per second out of this planet alone. I could probably expand it even more, but we're getting diminishing returns. Uh, and we're already at 32 core mining drills. Um, let's see. 204 from 32. And I think we've got double that on Nalvis. Uh, yeah, exactly double that. So 204... That's interesting. I forgot to take in t uh, planet radius into account, but that is quite the dramatic difference. We get less... Uh, we get fewer core fragments per second out of double the number of drills on Nalvis than we do uh, on Penium, which has over 9,000 radius. Hey, Chucky. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so let's land here. And maybe I should leave a stash of... Belts, inserters, and so on. Um, in case something like this happens again. Maybe it would be worth uh, adding more drills, actually, as well. I mean, it's probably the easiest way to increase our throughput of Vulcanite core fragments right now. We do have Penium 2 on the way back here, 52 seconds. Um, I don't think... I don't think our ship, our two ships that come here and back are the bottleneck anymore. Um, really, the only couple of reasons that I would perhaps not expand our drilling here is there's not that much room uh, that's not going to upset the biters. What do you think of the upcoming SpaceX uh, elevator? Sounds good. I didn't actually anticipate that it would be that uh, interesting. Lenarian, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I was reading that um, trains are going to be able to go through it. However, because, because you're linking multiple surfaces, LTN isn't going to be able to just schedule the trains straight through the space elevator. Um, because, and I consider this uh, a bit of a blessing, actually. I haven't done much or anything, really. Um, my original plan for Moors involved a bunch of rail, but as our designs for outposts evolved, we got away from that entirely, and I've just used vanilla trains on a couple of outposts where we need to bring crude oil. Um, however... At the time that I thought I would have to use uh, LTN on separate surfaces, uh, I thought at first that I would have to put everything on separate... Uh, where is it? Uh, separate encoded network IDs, separate virtual train networks uh, manually, which would have been a massive pain to deal with, honestly. Um, I'll take the hit from not being able to schedule trains, like, straight from Nalvis to Nalvis Orbit. Um, and it's not going to actually... This is my prelim preliminary thought process, anyway. Um, it's not going to make it any more difficult than I expected it to be. I was imagining something like... 
you've got some giant structure. Um, it's got an input container and an output container. You dump all of the stuff in the input container and it ends up at the output container on uh, the orbital surface. Um, maybe something like that. Maybe there's a delay built into it. Who knows? Uh, I am impressed that they're doing, uh, like, I imagine there'll be a separate surface for the space elevator itself, and the vanilla trains can run through that. Um, but not being able to run LTN trains through it um, shouldn't really make it any more complicated than if it was more what I was expecting. We can have LTN trains deliver to the space elevator. Um, we can have vanilla trains run items to and like through the space elevator, and we can have uh, LTN trains pick up stuff from the space elevator at the other surface. Not too complicated. Could do some scouting to see if there's another big lake you could plant yourself down in? Maybe. Um, I wouldn't mind doubling these drills, to be honest. We could definitely... We could definitely pull it off. I'm honestly just being kind of lazy, trying not to. Um, but we've also doubled our belt throughput here, so I wonder if... We were just a little bit over the 180 belt items per second if it was all down this side. Um, so currently our belt limit is 360 items per second. I'm sure if we double our core mining drills, um, we're not going to hit that limit. So if I had like a bus of two belts up here, expand this out this way, that could fit there. If I put this here, are the biters going to be able to reach it? I have my doubts. I wonder if... I mean, I could always, you know, put this, like, up here. We could make it symmetrical. And keep it probably safe from the biters. I just don't want to have to move everything. Um, although it wouldn't be that difficult. Especially if... I let the next ship take all of the core fragments. Um, then we can literally just cut paste this whole thing. Because we won't have thousands and thousands of Vitamelange core fragments. Why is Pentium 2 not landing? Uh, probably this. 372. Um, let's see. Pentium 1. Copy. Uh, Pentium 2. Paste. There we go. All I did was change some uh, anchor clamp settings. Um, where's Pentium 1 right now? I don't want it to land while we're trying to move this stuff. So, I think I'll just switch that off for the moment. Those asteroids, though. Kind of spooky. Even though we're going slower, ever since we doubled the uh, container stress, um, all of a sudden we get really chunky asteroids that we have to deal with. But luckily the shields seem to be up to the task. We've got the lasers clearing out almost all of the small fry. And then the energy shields can catch the big ones. Hey, JP and Captain True. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so where are we up to? 20k. 
Uh, it is going to take a while to fill this thing. 359,700. What I might do, temporarily, um, I'll keep the circuit condition, and I'll add um, a logistic network condition to all of these combinators, not combinators, uh, inserters. So they're going to stop picking up when there's 300k, sorry, 600k in these chests, or when there's 360k in the entire logistic network, um, which incidentally is what fits in our ship. Um, so once we've got enough to fill the ship, the inserters will stop picking up. Um, and then we'll fill the ship, the ship will leave, and then as long as we pick, as long as we cut this stuff while, like, shortly after the ship leaves, there shouldn't be 700,000 Vitamalange core fragments that we'll have to move. Speaking of move, let's grab picket dollies. And I just want to put this, uh, chest full of media defense installation ammo closer to uh, the requester chest that's also full of them. Unfortunately, we can't hold down the button, so double fingered key press, go. There we go. Alright, so how fast are we loading here? 65k. It's actually taking a minute. Hmm. I might change this as well. So we're going to fill this ship. It's not going to launch itself. Uh, and then once I give the green light to launch, then we'll cut paste and move this stuff. Um, the only problem... How much landfill did I bring? Probably enough. So I want to move this stuff over... Um... Hmm. I guess we can't move it over this many tiles. It's going to have to be a multiple of two. Well, the clamp will be here, so I have to snap that to the 2x2 two two grid anyway. No chance of messing that up. Pity Lazy Me was hoping that LTN would seamlessly operate across the elevator connection. Yeah, no, it's because it's multiple surfaces. Um, which, to be fair, um, I think does make it easier to avoid problems uh, if you have LTN networks across different planets. And, I mean, even with other mods, like, normally multiple surfaces can't be reached by each other, right? Or at least some of the time they can't. I guess... Hmm, I wonder if... If all you did was added a setting to LTN, default off that allowed it to schedule trains across multiple surfaces and then just say, it's your foot, you can shoot it off if you want. That might actually solve the problem. Um, you would have to... If, if you were to set up rail networks on multiple planets, for example, um, that couldn't reach each other physically, you would have to deal with the logistic train... Uh, network ID, uh, what is it called? Encoded network ID. You'd have to program these in everywhere to keep the networks separate. Uh, and that would be a lot of work, I think, if you're doing a big network on two different planets. Um, but yeah, you could probably solve it just by doing that.
it wouldn't be the best possible solution. Um, but it would be a solution. Alright, so we're going right about there. Uh, let's save the fishies. And... Uh, that reminds me, I've got a mod installed, but I haven't activated it with this save yet, just in case something goes badly. Called Nice Fill. Uh, definitely want to give that a try. Alright, so this should give us enough room, except that these engines are in the way. Um... And I don't want to just take off this ship. Yeah, I'll definitely put a bunch of... Uh, I'll put a bunch of stuff in storage. How many drills do we have here? 25? I don't actually have enough to double it right now. Although these ships will bring more drills. Um, so that'll sort itself out. Uh, so we need to... This is another advantage of set requests. The bots don't want to take... If these were set requests, the bots wouldn't be trying to take um, these items back to the buffer chests all the time. What I have to do here instead is... Request a chest, all of the drills, um, and a bunch of belts. How much belt would we need? 79 plus 72 plus 4. Let's just call it one stack of each, or two stacks of each, just to be safe. A fat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Just tuning in is the news on the space elevator. Uh, yes, apparently you'll be able to drive trains through it. But not LTN trains, because LTN trains don't... Uh, don't schedule deliveries between different surfaces. My guess is the elevator removes and recreates the train at the destination. It would be interesting to see how they pulled it off, yeah. Um, I'll just put a few containers here, and we can just mark that for deconstruction. Um, once we've got... Once we've left, we can put all of this in storage. If we cut here, it's not going to mess with the roboports until we're ready. How close are we to launching? Uh, halfway. Cool. I could add a visual display to show how full we are. What have we got here? I would like 10, so we can get, like, every 10%. Don't really have room. I could make room, but no, I like this loading setup. They probably reused the train transfer system from Clustorio. What is that? I've seen a mod called, what is it? Factorissimo? Where you've got, like structures that act like a TARDIS, they've got more space in them than the space that they take up, and I think you can put those structures inside themselves, um, and you can run trains through them if you want to. It's pretty cool. should do a playthrough with that one day. Uh, I really wish I had landed this ship just four tiles further north. 
would make this a lot simpler. Uh, may as well request some more belts, just to be super safe. I almost value the antimatter more than the belts. Alright, what are we doing while we wait for this thing to finish loading? At Electra, we are building... What's this? Oh, I see. Does not support moving, really. Is this going to reach directly? Yeah, we're good. Um, should only need a robot for that anyway, whatever. It's fine. This will get the job done. As long as we can place all of these solar panels and then remove the robo stuff. Really unfortunate that um, radar construction pylons don't include just like a single robot charging station. Would make it very, very cool. Like, give it just one slow charging recharge slot. And then if you tried to do a huge build with bots, um, they would be extremely bottlenecked on recharging. But it still gives you a ton of quality of life. That's how I'd do it anyway. Taking a surprisingly long time to deconstruct these robopods. Still connected, right? Yeah, we're good. Alright, what else? How's our Vita Melange on Nalvis looking? Um, it's still moving. Not at full speed, I don't think. Oh yeah, I think I remember rate calculating this and realizing that we were actually bottlenecked on our maximum core fragments. 470 Vita Melange per second. Uh, this can do 351, the two of these blocks that we've made. And presently we're bottlenecked on like 250, 260 from our two planets. Uh, so we don't need to build any more blocks on Nalvis for a while, I think. Uh, will it keep up with our maximum rate just for the... Just for the Naquitite of Vitalic Acid Consumption... 80 per second, which is a little bit less than one of these blocks, I think. Uh, that does 92 per second. There we go, that's almost perfect. 120 Vitamelange extract per second is what we need. Um, we can assume there's enough furnaces to convert all of the nuggets. Uh, although... They're actually full again. Huh. They're completely full. Do we need more furnaces? There's no nuggets that have been delivered here. No nuggets. No nuggets. No nuggets. I thought we solved this. Uh, here we have some nuggets being turned into roast, although there's actually... Zero nuggets in storage, not counting the requester chests right now. No nuggets. 
That's kind of weird. Why... Why did Nuggets seem to be a lower priority to deliver here? Do we have enough trains? I think we do. Looks like it. Yeah, there's always a handful, at least, sitting in the depots. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we've got a lot of spare trains here. So why do we have all of this... Why do we have all of these nuggets um, that aren't getting processed? Maybe I'll just add a furnace block here for nothing but nuggets. Um, and I'll make it a higher priority than the Omni Smelters for drop-off. I don't like having to do such a thrown together fix, but it would also greatly reduce the the distance that the trains have to go. We should also add a depot around here. Probably about here would be good, although who knows, maybe we'll add another Nequitite block there. No, I think we'll put it here. Alright, so... Depot? Where even is the Depot? Actually, I think... I can actually see some of the missing chests. I still haven't up updated this properly. Um, let's grab one of our Depots that we know has been fixed. And then put that there. Also put in a whole rail block. And we want one down here as well. Remove the old power poles. Oh wait, I was going to put the depot here. Uh, undo. Copy paste. Remove that extra bit of rail. Grab our rail block. And go. That should be more than enough to let the spiders finish that build. Um, I also promised someone I was going to upload the malls that I have. I think at least one of them might have already been put on Factorio prints. Let's check. Uh, search for mall. Yeah, we've got the... We've already got the, uh, the Nalvis mall that has the autocrafter. And I guess I can throw up the, uh, the one from Nalvis Orbit as well. It's a bit of a mess at this point, but you can definitely have a look at it and get the idea. Um, how about this? Now this orbit all. And... Orbit all all with auto crafter. Export to string. Uh, blueprint string goes here. 
description, title, and is mall a tag? Yes. And let's grab a screenshot, I suppose. Uh, that's a lot. Let's get a less busy screenshot if we can. I'll do a little snip of that. Are we still loading? We are 220k. We're two thirds of the way there. Um, okay. Paste this here. And then. That'll do, I think. So there is our orbital mall. And I'll throw that in the chat as well. You don't want that since bots don't care if there's a huge queue to a charging station. Yeah, no, it'd be more just quality of life to be able to do... to edit one or two things um, at a distance. With the... Uh, if the radar construction pylons had, like, one bot charging port. Alright, um... We need assembly... Why did I say assembly? Uh, we need stack inserters. 8, 16, 32... Actually, I don't think we do need the stack inserters, but just to be safe. Um, I should also leave a stack of each type of combinator here. We don't need crafting combinators. I just realized with the with the really large ships that we have, um, it's now more feasible that I could make a dispatching system where like the moment we've got greater than X Vitamelange core fragments available here, we request a ship to be sent to this location. Except then I want the next ship to be sent to a different location if more than one location is requesting a ship. So I'd have to make a system of like memory cells and cycling between the locations that are asking for something. At that point, I may as well just have a count for how many ships we send to each destination maximum. Um, and don't bother with the transmitting system. Definitely a project I might try in sandbox mode. Uh, it'll take a long time to sort out the bugs in a normal game. My robots have the same issue since they only have one port. Roboports, that is. Ouch. You have a million bots get stuck trying to charge at the pylon. Yeah, only if you rely on just a pylon and overdo it. Um, which we can easily do with a regular Roboport, for that matter, but it wouldn't be as severe, of course. Uh, it seems the bots are not going to reach that anymore. And I maybe do this before moving the ship? What do we have here? Oh, I don't want this connected. I don't want it to contaminate our estimate of how much power we need. 
So all of that is connected. We've got basically zero used up out of 12.1 gigawatts. Uh, l less than 0.1 anyway. So we've got 12 gigawatts we can play with here. Um, that would be enough. That would be more than enough for a couple of energy beams. But two things. I eventually want to exploit a few of these planets. Um, but also I want to pump a ton of power into an energy glaive to start with so that we can clear the planet. Um, so I think we'll double this. In fact, why don't... are those spiders still placing rail signals? I guess there's a lot of them with this block. Mod settings on startup space exploration construction pylons to have charging points is disabled. NIT radar pylons. Nitrate. Not radar pylons. But I knew there was an option that was close. Oh well. Construction pylons. Huh. So when you upgrade a construction pylon to a radar construction pylon, if you have that setting, you actually lose. Um, the charging point. So it's not a setting that I can change now, right? It's only when you start a new game. Space exploration. Mass ejection, media, plague, scan. Yeah, okay. We've still got a few rail signals that need to be placed. So we'll get a few more little lurches before that's finished. Um, back to Electra. Uh, I think I would also like to have a solar panel block here. They should be able to reach all of that without issue. Um, why don't we put this here? So hopefully at least some of the bots will recharge that way. Uh, input signals, 200... Oh, right. 244k. Um, what's our estimate? It's 204 per second, right? And to fill this thing, we need 360. Uh, 245. 115,000. 204 per second. 563 seconds. Uh, it's actually another 10 minutes game time before this ship will be full. I don't think I want to wait that long. Then again, I think what I'm going to do is have the ship take off. And then we'll mark this for deconstruction. And then... The next ship isn't going to auto land. So we can just move all of this stuff over. Are we actually going to have... Let me just double check. There's going to be enough room. Uh, I wanted to double this. I think I still need to add more space here. I could add 50% with what I've done. Alright, I'm glad I double checked that. Um, we need about this much room added on this side. I'm pretty sure that'll be safe from the biters. 
Let's save the fishes for dinner. here as well. Uh, and I think we need to add just as much space over here. Do we have enough uh, landfill for this? 1.8k... Uh, about the same, probably. Yeah, we've definitely got enough. Oh. And I just hope that doubling drills isn't going to cause a problem power-wise. I don't think it is. I think one of those reactors um, would be able to handle what we've got already, and we've got two of them. We are getting some of the bots, not nearly enough of them recharging on this thing. Was that... was that right? Yeah, it was. Okay. Uh, I sort of forgot it creates a million bot jobs whenever we do this as well. But we still have a few minutes to wait to fill this anyway, may as well. I guess I could have dumped the landfill in here and then I'd be able to take off the ship anyway. Um, the bots are going to take it straight back to... the ship actually. So we'll do the same thing here as we did with this other stuff. If there's a mod that allows um, items to be delivered from buffer chests to buffer chests, I might give it a go in future. That would greatly simplify uh, dealing with bots to deal with physical things with spaceships. Although we've mostly solved the problem by using set requests. But we still need requester chests to take from the ship. Um, how much have we got here? 268k. Alright, the more I watch it, the slower it's going to go. Let's focus on Electra. Uh, did we run out of scaffolding, actually? We did. Maybe I should deconstruct this for now. Um, how much power do we have? 13 gigawatts. Alright. I'll remove this block, and we'll use that for... Um... 
making some energy theming. How much scaffolding do we actually have? Um, I'll count it when we've actually got it, but it's almost, it's about 4,000, I think. Alright, spiders have finished. They have not finished their job here. There's actually quite a lot missing, although I don't want the old power poles. Uh, but no, there's lots of pieces of rail they haven't built. Even though I had them walk across this multiple times. I'm a little surprised and disappointed. Uh, that glass and iron from the bot. Oh, that's probably why they didn't have all of their bots available. Because they walked past this and picked up a whole bunch of iron. What the... Spaceship crash. Okay. Uh, yeah, I need to get the deconstruction spiders to finish this job. That right there, those blue things that don't appear to be anything when we zoom in, uh, those are crafting combinator blueprint settings that sometimes get left behind. Don't know why they're up here. Um... As far as I know, they're harmless, but we can get rid of them. All we need to do is put down a ghost and then remove it. Um, previously, I thought I had to physically put the crafting combinator there and then pick it up. But it turns out just putting a ghost down and then removing it does the job. I don't know if those cause any problems or not. I haven't seen them cause any problems. Don't know what problems they would cause. But it's probably not good having random stray entities just lying around until the end of time. To the mall with you. And yeah, this is why the spiders were struggling to build this stuff, because half of their bots are out of action, basically. Alright, so we're going to build uh, just a bunch of furnaces. We'll need vulcanite blocks as well. Um, and the shape of it is just going to depend on... the throughput that we need. Industrial furnace... Uh, I will, of course, be using a beacon. Let's copy this one. I'm pretty sure this is optimal. Negatives. Oh, that's tier 3 modules. Uh, I should probably upgrade those, considering that we're bottlenecked on the Vitamelange extract that goes into them. Same applies to Vitamelange extract itself. In fact, we've got tier 3 prods all the way through two of these blocks. Um, I think this one is a higher priority, though. It's not.
All right. How many prods do we have? I've got 145 on my person. Uh, at the mall, we have zero. I'm sure we have a few in the construction spiders. Uh, we've got 50 here. And 54 here. I don't think we've got enough to upgrade all of those things. But I think I should at least use the tier 6s to turn nuggets into roast. I don't know why the smelters... Uh, like, I've tweaked this. I, I could... Hmm, maybe I should bump up the priority on pickup here. We've already got a train limit of 7 for these things. We've got so much uh, Vitamelange nuggets sitting idle while we don't have enough roast for some reason. And they're just not getting taken to the furnaces. So I'm going to try cranking up the priority to pick these up. But that said, I think it would still be a good idea to make a dedicated Vitamelange roast thing right next to all of these. Um, so what's our max rate of making nuggets? It will be a bit slower when we finally upgrade the prods here, but let's say that it is in fact 1.2k, or 1.3k even. Let's call it 1.2k. That's pretty fast. Except we're not going to be using all of that for a while. So let's aim for like 600 on either side if we can. Um, that is actually 10 times power consumption. Wasn't expecting that. This one. This should have the minus 40... Yep, minus 40% power consumption. Perfect. Alright, so I want this about in the middle. We want industrial furnaces around it. Module inserter... Industrial Furnace, Tier 6 Prods, hopefully we've got some, fantastic, oh they actually take 5, I forgot, so that's still 1 megawatt per furnace, unless I add another efficiency here. I think I will add another efficiency. We'll see what the max rate looks like with the belts and stuff. Hey, burgers and fries. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. The UPS, though, that's kind of brutal. Yeah, especially when the spiders are placing those uh, signals. If buffer chests could do that, you'd have bots constantly cycling items between them. Uh, you can have the bots balance between them, but also if we use set requests, we can control where items go. Uh, okay, so how high does this go? One more? Looks about right. What's up, Hacks? NM? Not much. Just uh, pushing some bottlenecks around right now. Because Naquatite is never fast enough. 
Alright, cool, that does have coverage. How are we on this planet? 311k. Alright, we've got another couple of minutes or so before this ship is ready to launch. Um, so we got landfill just in case. We've got lots of belts, inserters, combinators as if we need them, drills. Uh, we should also add roboports. And some superchargers. That should probably do it. That'll allow this block, uh, this planet to edit these things once I leave. Let's go back to Navis Orbit for the moment. And I've set things up on Pentium so that uh, this ship isn't going to launch until I say so. Uh, the ship that's waiting in orbit isn't going to auto clamp until I turn this back on. So once this ship is ready to take off, we're going to move. Uh oh. No, it's fine. Uh, once the ship is ready to take off, we're going to do that and then move all of this over to the right a bit, and we're going to double our drills. Between now and a million years of passing, I need to sleep, so... Oh, where did, what did I miss? A million years off worrying about an aquatite, yeah. <laughs> take care, burgers. Thanks for dropping by. Alright, so what about Electra? Wow. Uh, the bots are taking their sweet time. Hmm. Why don't we see if we can put a supercharger between them? And... It'll take a while for these bots to recover anyway, but... I do wish blueprints could include an order that things are going to get built in. Really? Oh my god, what a tease. Come on, it's just two pieces of... Just two more butt deliveries would have done it if they'd started in the right place. Good grief. Here it comes. One more. I, I know you can do it. I believe in you. How do you have power on that ship since your reactors are offline? Uh, they don't have fuel in them, but they do have heat. And heat is what actually gets consumed um, in order to generate steam. Uh, and once the accumulator charge drops below like 95% or something, 90%, uh, then we're going to put, we're going to take out this used up uranium fuel cell, and when we do that, that's going to trigger putting in the next fuel cell. That way we can control, make sure there's only one fuel cell that's actually in the reactor at any given time. Oh, we got it, finally. Okay, supercharger. Build the supercharger so that I can mark this for deconstruction and stop watching. Uh, 
Whenever you're ready. Where would it be stored, actually? I know we've got them. Here it is. Supercharger. Collect the supercharger. We've got 50 construction bots just sitting here in the robot. Uh, in the robopot. Uh, I guess we'll give that a few minutes. Let's look back at Penium, see if our ship is ready to launch. It is getting there. I guess I could launch it early, now that we've got everything set up. Alright, let's do that. And away you go. Actually, I can put this here again. Alright, cool. Um, stop. Wait, what? Four fragment vitam lunge greater than... Oh, uh, equals zero. There we go. Stop the inserters. And that way we won't have 700,000 vitamelange core fragments that we have to move. Why have they not built... Oh, I see. I didn't mark that for deconstruction yet. Now that is a bot snake. Look at it go. Beautiful. Probably we're going to get some bitter melange core fragments shoved in here when we move this stuff, um, but that should sort itself out. So you turned off the activity animation on your turbines? Uh, no, they just... They just turn extremely slowly. Um... Oh, also we're running off of solar power. We're right next to the sun. So these two solar panels here are giving us way more than enough power to sit idle and not consume any of our steam, therefore not consume any of our heat. Uh, in fact... Oh. That's weird. I guess with all of the robot charging, we did consume a bit more energy than usual. So the accumulator charge got low enough that we put more fuel in, so now the heat is rising again. It's probably going to lead to a bit of a waste if I don't take advantage of it. So now that we've got a supercharger between the deconstruction plans and this roboport, uh, most of the bots should use that when they need to recharge. I hope. This one's down to half. Yeah, I think it's going to run out of power before it gets back. Although that one went all the way up here. There we go. Immediately getting recharged. So you might hear some... We might hear the turbines kick in, or not. I'm surprised we put more fuel in if that doesn't do it. Oh well. Uh, we need to pay attention to Penium right now. We've stopped our Vidamelange until we move this stuff over. Um... I need to measure exactly how much room we've got here. So 
So right about here, I think. Do we have room to double this over here? Almost. And here, a little bit. We can move it over two tiles. No, we need to move it over exactly two tiles because... Uh, I can't see where it is. Wait, what? No. What happened... What happened to half of the drills that I just... Uh... Confusion? What just happened to our copy-paste? Alright, let's remove the drills. I think we've got all the belts in place, at least. That was very weird. Uh, this just makes it even harder to figure out exactly where to put this. Let's say we put it there. This would go like that, this would go like that. Can I cut this all again and then put this here? Then on this side we should have just enough room. Okay. That that should be fine. Alright, let's start by putting back the drills that we had. I think that's right. And then... If we do this exact same thing again... Let's check our robot coverage, not good enough. Okay, so I'm pretty sure, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I don't think we're going to have, um, 360 core fragments per second coming out of this, so the belts should still be fine. We'll have to change the shape of it here a little bit, of course. Um... We could have these two merge without a splitter, but there's no need. I think it'll be easier if I design it down here first. So we want... Those two belts to merge down there. And... Something similar over this way, except it'll be a bit further down. It's a bit messy. There's no particularly good pattern here. I guess that's fine.
How many bots do we have? 217 construction bots. This is taking a lot longer than I would imagine. Um, but that shape should work just fine for our underground docks. bit different. Get rid of all of that. This might be in the way. okay actually and get rid of this stuff and place like so let's clean up those messy wires hey sigma bean good to see you again well welcome hope you're doing well That's relatively neat. Kinda don't like that diagonal wire. It's unnecessary. What is this little tiny ghost? Spaceship clamp wire pass through. Okay, no. That doesn't... That shouldn't be there. This is like the uh, crafting combinator settings entity. That gets left behind somewhere uh, sometimes. Uh, I did want to make sure we wouldn't get forsaken pieces of core fragment. That'll be stuck in the belt until the end of time. And same applies over here. And here. And here. And here. Um, that should pretty much be it, I think. Oh no. Oh no, I didn't pack pylon substations. Oh, what an oversight. Uh, okay. But I think the next ship that lands is going to bring some. It is not. Oh no. I can arrange for the next ship to bring one. Um, let's see. Island substations. One stack. I don't suppose we're requesting those here. Um, and just by adding it here it will force the ship to have to actually have that um, before it takes off. Also, it's still got some media point defense in here. Should probably do something about that. Send a cargo rocket with some? Absolutely not. I don't want to make more mess. Alright, once the media defense ammo, point defense ammo is gone, I want to cancel deconstructing this. There we go. 
or a cargo gun since it's only one stack. Uh, you can only send basic resources with a delivery cannon. Uh, barrels, uranium. Okay, these are less basic, but still. Scrap, heat shielding, LDS, plate, plastic, coal, iron, and so on. Nothing too advanced. Guns only work in the same solar system. Yeah, it is the same solar system, though. Uh, the reason we're not using guns anymore is because... Well, apart from the resources that they require, as opposed to just antimatter stream. Um, because they have to fire from such a huge radius planet and all the way across the solar system to Nalvis, um, it requires a huge amount of energy to fire these cannons. Our set request thing is... The connection is gone. How dare you. Also, I forgot to change these back. Uh, so we don't want a logistic network condition on this. There we go. Yeah, we had, like, this many um, delivery cannons earlier. Like, as many as would fit in the space taken up by the ship here. Uh, and it was still bottlenecked when we had half as many drills, or at least as many planned drills here. Um, it would actually bottleneck on uh, the cannons themselves, because they took so long to charge. You also only get half a stack, for some reason, with core fragments, um, when you use a delivery cannon. Okay, so, uh, I think we already have a delivery scheduled to bring us our substation pylons. Apparently not. Oh, did I not add a request here? I didn't put the negative. So that was... the positive number was telling LTN we have pylons available. Not that we're requesting them. Alright, cool. Let's check in on Electra. Oh, we're back at Nowis already. That's cool. Uh, Electra, deconstruct that. And this as well. Look how much quicker that was just because we put a supercharger before the RoboPort. Um, I think I want to move the ship. And we're going to put it up here-ish. Should still have, yeah, actually lots of range. We're still waiting on that Defense ammo. Oh, wait, no, we're not. I forgot to add inserters for this. That's my bad. Okay. Don't tell me we just ran out of... Wait, we didn't. How much scaffolding do we have left? 1.7k. So we can pretty much do what we want here, I think. Um, And I've fallen for the trap 
of the bots will have to recharge again. Whoops. Uh, beam emitters. I like to put these at the north end. Um, I actually probably just want one big beam emitter. We've got 12 gigawatts to play with. So... For now... One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. This one also costs one gigawatt. Uh, we will probably have enough power for that. What are those solar panels powering? Uh, energy beams. That's the point of being here. Presently, they're only powering a little outpost here that's got... Um, Media defense. Wait, what? A uh, very weird choice how the bots built all but these two inserters. There we go. Yeah, at the moment, all they're really powering is the defense installations. Um, but we're going to be. Cooking some biters soon. We've got way more solar panels than scaffolding to support them. I could throw down some over here temporarily. Uh, that's looking a bit weird actually. Uh, alright, that gets us over 13 gigawatts. We should be able to afford this with a few more solar panels. I don't understand why they take so long to place these last few tiles. Probably a bot that's waiting to recharge has been reserved for it or something. Don't you need a corona mass ejection defense system here? Uh, good point. I actually keep forgetting that. Although I haven't seen coronal mass ejection, let's see, energy beams. Uh, Rampart is the next target. We've got so many outposts and I think only one, like, surface gets targeted at a time by these, as far as I know. We don't have to worry about a coronal mass ejection for another day and three hours. And Rampart is a surface that we have nothing on as well. Um, but yeah, I have actually neglected a coronal mass ejection def on a few surfaces but if I as long as I notice uh, where the next one is coming I could actually reactively fix that quite easily I don't think I brought a umbrella nope, no umbrella Okay. Um, so let's set this to target... Uh, I need to scan this first, actually. Because we need to see where all of the biters are before... We need the entire surface uh, revealed. Otherwise, the autoclave is going to stop doing its thing. How big is this surface? 
2k. Considering Nalvis is 5.6, uh, and this is the curve at the edge, it's going to take a little while to scan it all. But I think once we have a substantial amount of biters revealed, we can start glaiving. Do I have a construction ship? Oh, I was riding a construction ship, actually. This one is good and ready. I could send that out to Electra. And we can keep expanding. Pretty sure we've got everything, or we will have everything that we need at Pentium. Um, when the next ship arrives, it'll have substation pylons. Free train limit. Wait. Okay, that's fine. Oh, and we need to allow Mylon substations to stay here as well. What are those logistic bots doing? We've got about a million logistic bots haloing around the regular roboport. And these ones are just hovering directly above some requester chests. It's a bit odd. Alright, we're finally getting our pylon substations, though. Are there any fast-charging roboports in SE? Yes, that's the supercharger. Um, it has 64 times 90 megawatts uh, maximum recharge rate, as opposed to 4 times 1 megawatt. Um, whenever the bots recharge on these things, they pretty much just reach it and then immediately bounce off it but for some reason um the bots are behaving a little strangely not enough space in the network for the bots the trouble is um the bots don't prioritize going to the superchargers um they just sort of go for i think they go for the nearest charging port whenever they run out of energy which doesn't necessarily happen uh doesn't necessarily happen to be a supercharger and because the superchargers don't have any homes for the bots we do still need to have the robo ports um we can try and put the roboports, like, way out of the way, but then it becomes really awkward with, like, actually loading the robots into the robot system, or reading the logistic network contents in this case, for example. They just picked the nearest one, yep. Um, but yeah, we do have our... Pylon substations being delivered. We are ready to launch once we... Why are we getting a signal of negative seven? Excuse me. Um, yeah, there is a problem with the RoboPort read logistic network contents where it gives us a negative signal 
when bots are going to pick stuff up and move it around. Um, but it'll go back to normal once we actually clean all of this up anyway. So that won't be too much of an issue. However... I'm a little concerned that the sheer volume of chests that I've added here... Um, poses a bit of a problem as far as as far as keeping the bots charged goes. If I add a few more superchargers, um, we should be more likely to get the bots to use those. But the more of them that we have that go for the RoboPods, the more of a problem it's going to be. These ones seem to be trying to charge on the supercharger, but they, they seem confused. I don't know what's going on here. Like, these ones are obviously haloed around this RoboPod. And these ones around this one, uh, and so on. But these ones are sort of aimed, like, right about here. And also, it generally takes, like, literally no time for them to actually charge on a supercharger. And I don't know why these ones are hovering. Uh, it's pretty strange, actually. Oh, I also didn't want... As a general rule, I don't like to have the robo network stick out to where it would affect another block. In this case, it doesn't really matter, but might be a bit of a problem. What if I put it here? How far does that reach? Probably too far. That's why I put these up here. Hmm. Yeah, they're going to the supercharger, and then they're, then they're just sitting there. Is it because they have... Even if they're fully charged, I'm guessing they have to queue up for the charges to get back into a RoboPort? Is that what's happening? And while this is happening, they're very slowly losing charge, just sitting there. Even though they just went to recharge. Uh... Decom plan of the RoboPort and undo it? Yeah, I might do that. Actually, that might cause more problems in this case. Well, if I do this one, that's taking a surprisingly long time. Oh, that's why. We didn't quite decon it. Oh, we have to empty it of 600 repair packs. I could just add repair pack to that little blacklist there. Now the bots are hovering as if their RoboPod is still there. Well, replacing it made a bunch of them move. Now we've got an even worse halo around this RoboPort. Hmm. Restart the game? Oh, I think we're fine.
Okay. Uh, anyway, let's check in on Penium while we wait for that. I think we're fine. We're just waiting for some more drills and, more importantly, these pylon substations. Uh, also... Yeah, this will have enough each to build all of that stuff. That's fine. I definitely want to update these, uh... What the? Oh. Uh, these combinators right here. Stardust. So we don't necessarily shove 600, 700 repair packs into all of these, um... Robo ports. I mean, I guess it doesn't really hurt to be that over prepared, but it takes the insiders a long time to do that whenever we are loading a new ship. And one stack is plenty, honestly. On the other hand, this is kind of like free storage. Maybe I should just accept and use it. Repair packs are cheap, after all. Okay. Uh, back to Nelvis. Oh, the ship has left. The ship has left and the bots are still being weird. But we don't have enough... Uh, we don't have enough bot... Uh, robo parts here. We've got homeless bots. That's our actual problem. That might be the entire reason that... Yeah, 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 okay. I think I see how it is. I'm still seeing these bots are just sitting there, though. How many do we have in flight? 1,745. Plus two stacks of construction bots. Okay, so... Uh, 35 stacks, and we've got 6, 12, plus 7 and 7, 26 stacks. We need another two robo-ports just to, just to house these bots. That seems a little extreme, but then we've... We've just got so many chests uh, in these ships. Alright, well, we solved that mystery. Um, I think I would like to pay this spot a visit. Let's ride the module ship. Which doesn't have any modules right now, actually. I guess it just delivered some, but no, that can't be right. We need 500 to automatically deliver modules. I think, I think they were brought back to me, actually. Okay, let's take the old shuttle. Why not? Destination is Nervous. Also, hey Freka, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we are doing nothing but roast here. 
feels weird to go back to a non-omni smelter. Um, but the train system has just been so weird about picking up bitter melange nuggets to take to the omni smelters. Why does this schedule have no temporary stops? That shouldn't happen with a logistic network delivery. I've never seen that happen before, and we've got two trains that are doing this. That's very, very weird. Um, Alright, so how fast would this be? 73 per second... Oh, sorry, 86 per second in. Two belts and just a little bit of vulcanite block. Um, I think I would like to try for four belts on each side. Oops. What's our max rate of nuggets? If we actually had full throughput here, 1.2k. Good grief. I forgot about that. Alright, so this is 172 per second. We'll have four belts of nuggets coming in. Uh, we'll use a... straight 180 per second combinatorless balanced unloader here. I should learn to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I bet it's here. One off. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now I don't have to wait if I memorize that, I don't have to wait for the train stop to be placed, so we can measure these things. Uh, how much fit, uh, vulcanite block? 1.7 per second. I think we'll be fine. So, what would be the best shape for the belts here, I wonder? We could... This needs its own belt for input. I think I would like to have a long arm inserter for vulcanite input at two at each of these two output lanes. What's our output? One forty six per second. Uh, that's more than three belts. Actually, so we need four belts in, four belts out, not counting the vulcanite. What would be the best layout? Let's say we had two in in the middle. And in on the outside here. And then we need each one of the uh, each one of these needs a whole belt of output. Alright, I think I think it's pretty obvious actually. Output goes here. And a vulcanite input goes here. We will need to use both sides of the belt. Uh, so after the first four. I'll do it like that. Pretty straightforward actually. What's the individual rate? 
4.5, one stack and soda each. And a long arm for input, like so. Let me just copy paste flip all of that. I actually can't flip the industrial furnace even though it's got no uh, fluid inputs or anything. Seems good. I think that's our build, actually, pretty much. So we have one whole belt of input. We need 43.2. One whole belt of output. We need 36. Uh, this goes here. And the vulcanite comes in this way. I'll, I can't copy paste flip, so I'll blueprint this, get rid of the industrial furnace, and then flip like so. The mod has to mark the entity as flippable. How did you move stuff just one tile? Uh, there is a mod called Picker Dollies, uh, and most buildings, and even built. If, if it's just a ghost, uh, it works with buildings that it normally wouldn't, like cargo landing pads. Um, but most buildings, you can hold shift, point your cursor at it, and start pressing the cursor keys. And it'll let you move things around like this. Uh, it will preserve wire connections. So if I make a... Um, Pulse generator here, for example. We got both of them receiving input at the same time. Each times negative one output each. Goes to here. Uh, it takes zero ticks to transmit data across wires. One tick for a combinator to do something. Uh, so this thing receives... These two receive an input at the same time, and then one tick later, it gets this input cancelled out by the red wire. Uh, each greater than zero, output each. So, let's say you just want to move this around for the aesthetic, or because you're trying to figure out figure it out or something, it'll absolutely let you do that. Uh, it will not stretch wires further than they would normally be able to go, um, but it does keep all of the wire connections. It's very cool. Uh, and there's a separate key bind for rotating, for example, long combinators uh, in a way that vanilla doesn't let you. Hey, Raren. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having, doing well and having a good Sunday. Thank you. You too. Alright, so... The only thing left to do here... I do actually want to merge and split our input. Instead of balancing the output here, and then because the belt distances are different, we get some weird behavior. So, let's do... Let's say towards the middle, and then we'll do a corner or maybe a boomerang order for balancer. Um, would a corner look better? And should I do a lane balancer? I guess there's no harm. Uh, we'll do the boomerang. Boomerang lane balancer. That actually still sticks out across the middle. I don't think we really need um, a lane balancer this time. 
Perfect. Alright, so this one goes here. I could just move all of these over a couple of tiles. If it turns out better for the look of it. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inputs, actually. So we'll bring this over here. If I move this over another tile again, we could probably be a bit more consistent with this. Actually, let's move that over again so that this can be max distance. also do our Vulcanite on this side as well. Um, since we barely need any throughput for the Vulcanite, we'll do it this way. And just add a splitter here. pretty good. 1.7 Vulcanite per second is all we need for the entire block, so this will be fine. Filter inserters. Hey Morpheus out. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Mr. Belt, whereabouts? Isn't it only four lanes of input? Uh, it's four belts of input. Uh, 172 vitamelange nuggets per second. But, oh. Yes, it is. Good catch, thank you. That goes here, that goes here. All right, so we're scrapping most of this. Um, let's just delete all of that, rather than trying to salvage this mess. Should I move this over a couple of tiles just so that this part's going to be neat? I think I will. This is already max distance, right? Yep. So the inputs are here. Feels a bit awkward. And then... That's a decent fit, at least. I feel like we should be consistent with this, though. Cool. 
Vulcanite. And roast. I mean nugget. Roast is our final product here. Infamous, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Frenel, welcome, welcome also. Autosave's going to take a moment to get started. Uh, probably because we're scanning that planet that we're going to roast with the energy glaive. We just added a whole lot of surface to the save. Even though we're not doing a whole lot with it just yet. There we go. That was Nugget. Yes, good. Do you trim your planets from time to time? Yes, whenever I can. Um, that's the main reason. That's one of the main reasons for uh, ensuring we get biter extinction on a surface as well. Okay, so we're looking for, uh, let's say, 20,000 Vulcanite blocks. That means when we drop to 4,000, we'll get another delivery. Considering we need like 1.7 per second, I think that's perfectly safe. Uh, nuggets, on the other hand. Uh, what do they stack to? 50? Uh, let's go for... Let's go for 7 train loads, why not? 56,000. Uh, previously, when I set this as high as we can go, um, we would get this overloaded, but I want to see if we've actually got everything set up so that that won't happen this time. Nugget and block quester. That reminds me, um, do we have a chance to update this station name? Uh, this one. There we go. Bit of a lunch. Wait, 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 what? Uh, Vitamin Lunch Core Fragment. Fantastic. And we should have way more than enough here for a train to come and collect it. So, what's going on? We're actually full. Yeah, we're actually processing Vitamin Lunch Core Fragments constantly right now. Most left lane missing a input belt between underground belts. Most left lane missing an input belt. This one? Between un these two underground belts? Yeah, I'm good at forgetting corners. Um, so we've already activated that. And I want this to be a higher priority, uh, as opposed to taking it to the Omni Smelters. So that should sort that out. We'll add some signals down here. Uh, Vario, good to see you again. Oh, well, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We'll add a standard pickup station. It feels novel at this stage in space exploration to just have one output and we don't have to deal with any nuisance products. Um, so what's our max rate? Uh, 146 per second. We should be able to handle that with 
a type of loader that I haven't blueprinted yet, actually. Let's make one. So we got one, two, three, four belts of output. Uh, we will want a balancer. Let's go for a oh, plain old lane balancer like so. I want it in the middle of this, but I also want it in the middle of this, but there is no way to perfectly put that in the middle anyway. And if we do a corner one, it might be a bit of a cleaner build. Uh, corner. corner, corner, corner. That is a lane balancer. If I can rotate it properly. Okay. Let's say we start here. That's backwards. That's backwards again. Might be a little bit neater if these two look something like this. Hey, Dune. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How's your stream today? Continuing with space exploration. This can go here. And that'll be it. Alright, so what we're going to do here is... Rather than having a strict balancer, we're going to balance it the same amount going into each cargo wagon. Um, but for the inserters, we're just going to sort of soft balance them. Fun and games? Yep, SE. Cool. So first, we just need to shove that into the train. Secondly... Is this connected? No, it's not because I'm starting from scratch with this one. Okay, so for each cargo wagon, we're just going to connect all of these inserters together. Um, for the last one, it's going to be unconditional. Read hand contents, and I guess hold. And for each other inserter, we're going to set it to... Uh, anything greater than zero. And that's pretty much it. We could probably add read from here as well. I don't think we want to. So basically, all of these are going to ignore what's on the belt until this one picks something up. Uh, and then they're all going to pick something up at the same time. It's not going to give us a perfect balance, but it doesn't really need to. Um, and it's a pretty good zero combinator way to get a decently balanced load with high throughput. Cool. Should we double this? What's our max rate? Um, why is this not hooking as well? We seem to be bottlenecked on the belt, but I don't think... That's weird. Uh, 
rate calculations check out. We've got less than one belt of input. We're getting a solid belt of input. Oh, we haven't saturated yet, so maybe that's the issue. But it seemed like it wasn't working because it wasn't outputting fast enough. Nice trick, that. Thank you. Um, yeah, we don't have input right now. I want to make sure this works properly. Also, did Pentium get its upgrade yet? Pentium 2 is not landing. It's waiting its turn. Pentium 2 is the one that has the pylon substations ready to be delivered. Not to mention four more drills. It's going to take a couple more trips before this is automatically upgraded. How full is this ship? Uh, 200k. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I missed my mute button. Uh, we can just probably wait for that a little bit. But I'm eager to see exactly what our throughput is once we have um, 64 drills on this planet. Oh, and we're here. I was going to visit Nervous myself, mostly to deliver some prods. Um, but first I want to make sure this is working properly and decide if we're going to duplicate it already. The recipe is so slow. It's going to take a while to saturate, partly because it takes a hundred nuggets for one recipe. Which means that we're going to have hundreds of nuggets. 120 extra nuggets. No, nope, more than that. Yeah, literally 200 nuggets extra in each machine. Uh, I'm glad we didn't ratio this to, like, exactly consume 180 per second or something, otherwise it would have taken 700,000 years uh, to saturate. But I'm eager to see if we actually have some output problems. There's only two nuggets here and it's not starting the next recipe. For each belt, it's actually only 36 uh, roast coming out. So you would think, well, for each half belt, it's 18 out of a maximum of 22.5. You would think we wouldn't actually get any, have any issue. If we're only making 4.5 per second, maybe fast inserters would be better. I mean, we could test this by just dropping the stack size to 3. So that way we're going to get gaps um, that allow the inserters that are ahead of us to do their thing. Yeah, I think... I think a shorter stack, a smaller stack size is actually the way to go here. Why doesn't it start the... Oh. Wait, I thought it only had like two left over here. And it wasn't continuing the next recipe, but it looked like it had another 50. The question is, does a stack size of 3 keep up as well? 
but it's looking like... Uh, the fact that they're finishing the recipe at about the same time doesn't help. I guess if we're that close to capacity for the belts, it's going to do that anyway. Yeah, no, this does seem to be working. I think this will be okay. Uh, let's do a downgrade planner. Oh, here we go. Perfect. I think that'll give us three, uh, full throughput. We've still got a couple of these machines that are switching off sometimes. Good day. I am Freaky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hmm. Getting items under belts and getting them bottlenecked in ways that sort of shouldn't happen is a bit of a headache. If I added a chest in between, I'm sure it would sort itself out. Wait. Oh, the fast inserters aren't fast enough. This this one's right up the top, and it was having an output problem. Alright, back to stack inserters. We'll try a stack size of four and see what happens. I want the stack size to be just small enough that the one in front isn't constantly waiting for the one behind it. And go. New space exploration in July, will you start over? Uh, I'll finish this run first, but I'll definitely be doing another playthrough at some point. Um, I want to do a bunch of blueprints before I even technically get started. Um, and we'll like plan for the future with builds shaped for wide area beacons from the beginning. Um, so that we don't end up with things like... Let's see... Uh, builds like this, for example, there's no there's no salvaging this when we're on wide area beacons. We just have to deconstruct it. Speaking of which, um, uh, it looks like I did mark this for deconstruction already, but I forgot about it since we've got. Um, no requests on the input stations. Let's bring our deconstruction spiders. Oh yeah, that's right, I still need them to empty these chests. Um, yeah, we've got old builds like this with many, many machines just sort of being slow or sitting idle, using a lot more UPS than they otherwise would. Uh, I think I would like to have a playthrough where I design a bunch of stuff before we even get started, uh, and it's going to fit. It's going to fit wide area beacons, but we could have it so that we can put in basic beacons in the meantime. Um, and maybe. Certain technologies we could kind of skip over, or we could set things up so that they're easy to transition from.
There's a whole lot of thought that could go into that. Where's our furnaces? I'm seeing all of them on now. They're all glowing. I, I think that was the solution. Stack size 4. Maybe 5 would work as well, but that's the basic idea. Because there's always little gaps left uh, right about here. Or almost always. Um, this one's not going to have trouble outputting. Then I can get back to where I am before my vacation time. Oh, with the uh, with the new update. Nope, this one's switching off again. Uh, might just have to live with it. Actually, a lot of them are switching off. Maybe... This shouldn't be happening, really. I think it's because of the huge recipe size. Uh, we have an output of 50 per recipe. But, like, we've only got 18.3 out of 22.5 for each half belt. And yet... We're running into this problem of the outputs being blocked. I could maybe stretch this out a little bit. Oh, I could definitely stretch it out more. One, two, three more tiles on either side. And we could have... So if we have four output belts coming down this way, uh, and then we just merge them together, I think that'll actually solve the problem. Um, I would like to stop the input for a while, and then we'll redesign this a bit. I guess we'll stop the vulcanite blocks as well. I would prefer if I could keep the vulcanite blocks where they are, but I won't be able to do that. Uh, Zalian? Thank you for the follow. A welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Have two weeks of vacation time in a few weeks that I plan to, on using for SE. Nice. Can you do the underground trick where inserters can place into gaps? Too small to accept an item if they're placing into underground belt entrances slash exits. I hadn't heard that one. We could also try uh, inserting directly onto splitters, but with the space that we'll have to add for that, I don't know. Well, actually, I'm kind of curious now. Yeah, I'll try that one in a sandbox later on. I haven't seen that in action. Alright, so... One, two, three. We can move this three tiles out and it would still be touched by the beacon. Um, we're going to lose so many production bonuses here. Oh well. Try placing a zero length underground on the stack inserters. Zero length? Uh, do you mean like underground entrance here and exit here or or what if we can't do it without stretching this thing horizontally then it doesn't really help yes okay um i'll try it in super editor i want to try this other thing first can we finish up with these huge recipes already, though? Okay. Um, I could use pick a dollies. 
We're only moving the ones on the outside, so that might be a good idea. Now, how far apart do we need to put it? Uh, I need one more belt here, one more belt here, so just two tiles, I think. Rip inserters. That looks kind of weird. Pick up those vulcanite blocks. Um, let's just get rid of this. Whoa, not that one. Or at least not yet. Just get rid of this for now. So we're going to have... It's four on each side, isn't it? Something like... This. So this would normally be just a half belt. Uh, we're using a full belt for it so far. And on this side... Oh. The way I was doing this, we wouldn't have needed the extra tiles sticking out. Uh, let's see what that's going to look like. So these two would need to swap sides. So a half belt becomes one belt, and a half belt becomes one belt, and then we merge them. This would squeeze through here, I guess. I think we could pull that off. And then we don't have to move these around anywhere near as much. So the long arms actually don't need to be moved. Uh, I was going to cut and paste this, but I forgot. I wanted to pick a dollies at backs to not mess up the recipe. Um, let's cut this. And this. Copy paste. Yeah, I think that probably should work. Let's put this back here. And this goes back here. And then we just have this. Turn these around again. So we have twice as much room as what we should need at first um, to output stuff onto the belt. Um, and then we just merge it back in at the end. These two have half a belt to themselves. These two have half a belt to themselves. Uh, all of the max throughput of these machines is less than half a belt. Same thing down here, and then they merge. That should be fine. 
It's going to take a little while to saturate again before we can confirm if it's working. But I don't think it's going to take too long before we see uh, lots of stuff waiting to be output on some of these machines. We get to 76% before the stack inserter is done outputting. Also, we've we're back to a stack size of 12. Um, that's probably fine. Yeah, I'm pretty confident this is going to work. Uh, and we definitely don't need a lane balancer here, because the inserters are very much able to keep up. So let's block that off for now. And I'll simplify this a little bit. Corner. Belt balancer. Goes here. It actually keeps up with 180 per second, uh, this particular loader. That's quite good. But we're not actually getting 180 per second out of this. Uh, it's 172 per second. We'll need to wait a little while after what we just did to see if... to confirm that this is working properly. Let's check our rate as well. Do we need another one yet? 172 nuggets per second. Um, this gives us 468. Okay. How much Vitamalange are we making? I think it was like 1.5 times this block. Oh, that was before we upgraded Pentium as well. 263 per second. Uh, 200 and... About 700. Okay, we definitely need to double this. Let's get to it. And we'll start with this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I can't just copy paste flip this because of the asymmetry of inserters arbitrarily putting it onto the right side of the belt. So we need one of these. And this part, we can definitely copy, paste, flip. This part's symmetrical, right? Yeah, that's good. Think that goes there. Perfect. Oh, did I flip this? Yeah, I did. So 
So this goes here. And then if we flip this, we should line it up with a second output station. Actually, I think that's one off. Uh, okay, what happened? Let's move that over a tile. If you want to temporarily disable an LTN station, don't just blindly turn off its combinators. Just ended a mother of all deadlocks that tied up most of my trains around a station that couldn't decide if it wanted to be a requester or provider. Uh, would it help if you have default request and provide thresholds so high that they effectively don't exist? I do this so that I have to manually put in uh, a require a provide or request threshold. All right, so that is lined up. Kind of a weird pattern of those green wires that just got spawned. just going to be different by one tile. Uh, I guess I could have moved it over a bit, but this is fine. Rather consistent look. We need more prod modules. Uh, luckily, I am carrying them. Fantastic. That's a neat trick, indeed. Yeah, because sometimes, for various reasons, it does happen by accident sometimes, but also uh, sometimes you're going to have like a positive signal that gets sent to the LTN train stop unless you go out of your way to make that not happen um, when you don't mean for it to be a pickup station, for example. Uh, much easier to just have effectively no request uh, provide threshold on that station. When are we getting our Vulcanite? There it is. Fantastic. And don't forget a couple of signals over there so that these trains can go through that roundabout if they're going somewhere else. This part right here. Fantastic. Uh, we're also missing this little bit of belt here. And... That's interesting. Oh, because of how that bit lines up. This doesn't reach as far. I think I would like to... Move these up a tile. For the look of it. And then if we're going to be consistent. Um, these can all be moved up one as well. Alright. So that's only 64 furnaces. That's actually like half less than half of one of our Omni Smelter blocks. But still haven't figured out why most of the time the trains don't want to deliver roast here, even though they do sometimes. Ooh, overflow chest. I beg to differ. Yeah, none of these are receiving roast. It's very strange. Uh, nuggets, rather, to turn into roast. Uh, 
I guess it takes the pressure off the Omni Smelters as well. Um, how many prods do I have left? 62, that's not that many. How many would I need to upgrade one of these? 24 times 4? Uh, 96, I think. So we can't even upgrade the first step for one of these blocks. We've got 345 nuggets per second that we can consume. 470 per second until we upgrade the prods here. But then... Oh no, we've got the modules in the beacons already that are tier 6. Well, hopefully that will help. Maybe we should make another block like this. Uh, we need 5 times 64 modules. 320, that's kind of a lot. Let's add a little icon here. For roast. Uh, and let's check on Pentium. We still haven't loaded this ship. I think I want to send it early. 326 out of 360k. It's not going to be that much longer, but the sooner I put this pylon substation down, the sooner our throughput increases. But the sooner I launch the ship, the more of a waste of fuel it is. Um, I should probably make sure we're not approaching a point where we're actually demanding too much of our antimatter. Considering that it's very, very full here still, I don't think we need to worry just yet. Max rate is 600 per second. Uh, and considering how far antimatter gets us, that's quite a lot. Choices, choices, indeed. Alright, um, why don't we let the spiders carry those prod modules now, and I'll send them back to the mall for the moment, along with their sad little robots. Oh, we finished picking this up. Fantastic. Next thing I want to try to remember to do with these spiders is come over here to destroy the, well, to deconstruct the old green circuit build. I think here, yeah, we've got two old green circuit builds that we decommissioned a while ago. Are you going to update when the new SE is released? Uh, maybe not. Uh, there might be some bugs or something. We'll see. Maybe I'll make it back up and give it a try. Why do we have saturated belts here? It's very bursty because of the recipe type. Uh, but yeah, that seems to be working just fine now. Alright, I think now is as good a time as any. Captain EU EO -E 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 Uh thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh might take a little break here. 
let's throw on the Eltian screensaver and get some words on stream going. Give it a week for the bugs to appear. Might also be recipe changes. If there's recipe changes, yeah, I definitely want to avoid an update in the middle of a playthrough. Alright, autopilot on. I am Freaky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Shatcat, good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. Alright. In 30 seconds, I'm going to start the words on stream, and I'm going to be back in a few minutes. Have fun.
crushing it. One more? One more. Okay, skip another three. Wow. Nice, nice. Uh, living to die. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's continue with some space exploration. And where were we? We just got done making a block for Vitamelange Roast. Um, we don't really have the prod modules to double this again, but let's see. I see that one's not switched on at the moment, but we've got almost perfectly... Let, let's say we've got 340 bit of melange nuggets per second now. Um, our block that uses the prod sixes is going to consume 180 per second, and this one's 225. Yeah, we should definitely make another block like this. Um, I think I will put it right here, actually. Unfortunately, I already landed my ship here. Um, but since... I, I, I still don't know why the trains don't want to bring Vitamelange nuggets to this, to the Omni Smelter blocks. Like, it seems to be their lowest priority. Not that you can prioritize different uh, resources to be dropped off at the same station. Well, you can with pickup priorities. That might be the reason, actually. If most of our if most of our ores and stuff are coming from core fragments and we've got high priority pickups because we have to keep this we have to keep this moving otherwise we lose resources um that might be the reason because we don't have as high a priority pickup on uh, nugget pickup. No, I already updated that. It was relatively recently, but it was it was long enough ago that we should see these. I was going to say we should see them taking deliveries to the Omni smelters, 
but I also set the priority, the request priority on these two blocks very high, because we're going to get uh, higher productivity bonuses at this block. Alright, so what I might do is take the shuttle back to Nalvis Orbit, get this out of the way, um, it will make another block just like this in pretty much the same spot. Also, we've definitely got room for another 18 trains in the rail network, so let's get ahead of it for once. And... We'll get those trains ready to shove into the system. Bring our construction spiders back here. And what I'm going to do for now, I know we don't have the prod... I'm, I'm pretty sure we don't have the prod modules uh, to build this just yet. Um, but I'll fill it with prod 3s and set the priority slightly lower until we can upgrade it. Are those robots stuck? Uh, these ones belong to some construction spiders. In fact, they belong to this lot. Um, I should have done this before I launched myself back to orbit. But just like I updated the spiders in orbit, um, what I should do, uh, if I can click on one of these, what I should do is take all of the things these spiders are requesting and split them up into like two types of spiders. Um, it shouldn't be necessary, but the bots have a habit of splitting... Why does this have an efficiency 9? Uh, okay, that's something to bear in mind when we come looking for our tier, tier 9 modules. Um, so let's find an example. Here we've got 50 pylons, and the stack size is 50. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't auto-sort, and sometimes placing things and picking them up again and stuff, the bots don't put... they, they split the stacks, basically. So luckily I can fix this sort of temporarily with the navigation satellite. If I just pick this up, it, you can see immediately it went... That I don't actually have a pylon in my hand, it's just a ghost that I can place. Um, but immediately that stack got shoved back into this... what the... Oh, that was just delivered. Okay. Um, yeah, anytime we find a split stack, I just click on it and press Q to drop it again. Um, like this one. And the reason the bots weren't moving is because they didn't have room. Uh, unfortunately, even if something is supposed to go straight to auto trash, um, the bots have to put it into the regular inventory first, which makes it that much worse. So we should have multiple stacks of empty space all the time for each of these spiders, but it doesn't work out that way. So I've been procrastinating what I did with the orbital spiders, which is uh, split them into two types. Um, the purple ones here are carrying assembly machines mostly. Um, and small stack size things and stuff, and the blue ones are carrying belts, uh, combinators, inserters, uh, pylons, and so on. Um, and they've just got a lot more inventory space left free, so that doesn't tend to happen. 
Are those bots moving yet? Nope, we still haven't found the one spider. Now they're moving. Okay. Um, I don't really want to wait for them though. We're going to have the spiders travel back over this way. And I'll just put productivity threes. I'll block off the rail until we're ready. Because I at least don't want nuggets getting shoved in with zero productivity bonuses. Okay, what's next? Did we finally get our pylon? Yes, we did. Fantastic. Uh, there's that entity that we had to get rid of before. Spaceship clamp wire pass through. I'm not exactly sure how I managed to copy those, but we had a few over here after I cut and paste these things. Um, but yeah, next time a ship arrives here, we should have 64 drills. What's our current throughput? It'll be a little bit higher than this, but not much. 281. When we had 32, it was 204, so I think we're going to have like 283 core fragments per second or something. Uh, currently, we've got the capacity to deal with 360 per second, so don't need to worry about that just yet. Um, so the next thing... to push that bottleneck even further? Oh. Um. That's fine. But a little surprising. <laughs> I sent the second construction ship here. I didn't expect it to auto-anchor to the other construction ship. Because just to keep things simple, I have clamp ID 99 on both sides here, clamp ID 99 where they go back to Nalvis orbit, and we're just connecting 99 to 99. Um, that's fine, I guess. But this one is looking a bit empty, actually. You've got more scaffolding left over than I realized. Let me just temporarily put some radar construction pylons here. And then... We'll expand down this way. Oh, and I was also waiting on scanning this planet. Uh, this'll do for a start, I think. We can now set this one to... What was that planet called? E-I-R-E-N-E. -E. Irene. Did I not just... Oh. Okay. Autoclave. And away it goes. Seems a bit weak at the moment. Uh, what are we 
already got... Oh, it's like warming up. 33 gigawatts. 32 gigawatts. That's weird. It's actually dropping in intensity, apparently. Why are our bots not doing things? Because this isn't connected. And away they go. have we got? 8.1k, 4.8 times about 5, 24,000. Uh, we should be able to do like 6 blocks, probably. Since we've got a supercharger between them for all of that, hopefully that'll be enough. Alright. So what's next? I don't suppose we're getting close to having enough vitalic acid not to bottleneck on this stuff? Not even close. Or it might take a while to catch up anyway. Mm, roasted bugs, indeed. Exporting democracy one jewel at a time. It's going to be a bit lurchy until the spiders finish placing these rail signals. Uh, we do have a few productivity modules at least. Let's go with... Tier 3 modules. Let's see, we've got 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, I would rather have, like, some of these are fully loaded with prod 6s and the rest are fully loaded with prod 3s if I can. Wait, what? Oh, I don't have the industrial furnace. In Industrial furnace, tier 3 prod, let's go. And that'll give us seven, one, two, three, four, five. Let's do this. A El Pancho. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's add, whoops. Let's add a tag over here. First. And speaking of tags, let's get the deconstruction spiders to remove. Uh, I also want them to remove this block. But I was going to do those green circuit builds first. Oh, isn't this one of them? Yeah, it is. So there's actually three big old green circuit blocks uh, that we need to remove. The biggest problem is removing uh, the items that are in the chests. So 
like we're done with the signals. Um, have we got the prods in there? Almost. I'm pretty sure we've got the prod sixes to finish the job over here. There's those butts still trying to catch up. Fantastic. Let's reconnect this. Oh. That one... Wait, what? Why does it say filters prod 6, but it's... That's kind of strange. It's going to do that with this one as well. Alright, do we have any more... Do we have five more prod sixes is what I'd like to know. Huh? Oh, I didn't save that earlier. Prod six... Filters 5, deliver 4. So that's a no. I don't want to bother with that. Cool. That block should be ready to go. Back to the mall with you. And do these trains have a path? Uh, it would appear so. That's a lot of trains scheduled to just this name of station. Vitamelange Nugget plus Vulcanite blocks. Although I did set the train limit to six for each of these, and these two are empty for now. Uh, and we know we've got an abundance of... Oh no. Oh no, I didn't connect this. Uh, there we go. LTN didn't know that there's anything in the chests on the right side. Uh, is this going to empty? Yeah, it is. Do we have more trains scheduled to go there? Probably. Uh, the rate of consumption here is high enough that I'll just let it run like that. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay. Let's have a look at Electra. Actually, are all of these ships working? Yeah, they are. Thought I saw them there before. They're just slow, old ion ships. Uh, we don't need to go to Capellus right now. Electra. I hope I didn't estimate. No, I think we've got enough scaffolding. It's just a lot of work for the bots. They should be able to get it done, though. If a buck can reach here, they can definitely get it done. Um, that said, let's have a look and see how quickly we're clearing out I Irene. Oh. Oh. 
Rip trees. Oh, that is... That's a, that's a larger area. That is more damage than I was expecting, considering what we saw last time. That do be kind of effective, though. Um, we've got 17% Biter Threat, not counting Biter Meteors. 4.2k Radius Planet. Um, it will take a while to clear at this rate. Uh, which is why we're going to pump more energy into it. Hey, repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Cooking a whole bite and nest that quickly, though, isn't too bad. Um, so I wonder what we should work on right now. Oh, um, how close are we to getting more Arcospheres? Uh, I could send this out. This would double the number of Arcosphere collectors we've used. It's going to take a while to get to the 40 that I want to automatically trigger a delivery here. Um... We don't quite... Ooh. Six comprehensive deep space catalogs. Amazing. Um, we don't quite have enough... Arcospheres to keep this going, apparently. Even though it takes very little... Uh, it only takes one Nequium plate... For each data card. It actually takes way less Naquium um, for the Tier 3 uh, Deep Space Catalogs compared to the Tier 2. I might have a crack at doing a build for dealing with Arcospheres that has fewer Arcospheres that are sitting idle. So my idea yesterday that I didn't bother with just yet was instead of setting requests or having a request um, of one Arcosphere here, when this recipe, when we want to do this recipe, um, well, originally I started with, we're just going to have the requests for these two types of Arcospheres here all the time. Uh, then I changed it to set requests. Uh, and we also have conditions on this inserter that these two types of Arcosphere, the outputs, are below average. Um, but that still leaves us with uh, uh, this is actually the perfect example to show the problem with this build. Um, because we're lacking a Arcosphere Omega to get this recipe started. We've got two Arcosphere Lambdas sitting in the machine and one Arcosphere Lambda sitting here. These are all out of circulation while this recipe doesn't happen. Um, so what I was thinking we could do instead is only when all four of these conditions are met we set requests on this to one of each of these Arcospheres. Uh, and we're going to use a memory cell, and the moment the inserter picks up that type of Arcosphere, we're going to subtract that uh, from the memory cell that's setting the request for this chest. Arcosphere bin counting, indeed. Which end? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so let's start this version over here. And... We're still going to need the total count 
of Arcospheres. I guess we could just read from the logistic network. Except that gets a bit fucky with the bots. When the bots move things around, we get a negative count, so I might still do it this way. Okay, I'm going to copy this just for reference to start with. Um, but instead of what we have here, let's work backward from our conclusion a little bit. Uh, we want to set requests. And I think I'll use a constant combinator to give those two signals. We're looking for lambda and omega. Um, and actually I want a memory cell between these. So we're going to have Decider Combinator. Move my character out of the way. Um, I use a Decider Combinator for memory cells so that we can blank it given a condition. Output uh, everything input count. If if r equals zero, r for reset. And I guess we need a pulse generator. So under a certain condition, we're going to pass through these two signals to the memory cell. Uh, but we only want to do it for one tick. And luckily the pulse generator does react to changes. So if we send this one first, and then we send this one, that's not going to be a problem. So the way we do a pulse generator that turns a constant signal into a momentary signal is we have our constant signal coming in here. Uh, signals are transmitted across wires instantaneously but with combinators, it takes one tick to start doing something and outputting uh, the result. So one tick after both of these receive an input, we're going to take the negative of this signal and send it to this combinator. So for one tick, it's going to receive a positive of 10 green. And the next tick, it's also going to be receiving negative 10 green on the red wire. And the total between those two is zero, so it's going to have nothing to output. Uh, and we can do each greater than zero, or we could do each not equal to zero. That works, actually. If we want to do negatives as well. Um, so... We have our pulse generator between these two. Under some condition, we're going to pass both of these arcospheres that we want to request through here. Uh, we're going to pulse that for just one tick into our memory cell, and then it's going to hold on to a request for these two. And then when our fast inserter uh, picks up whatever's in this chest, we want to subtract it from this memory cell. I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping with the way the bots respond to this, um, if we remove the request for what's in this at the same tick that the inserter picks it up, um, then we're not going to get a bot delivering another one like in the moment between if that makes sense 
So I'll use a red wire just to show you where subtracting each times negative one, output each. Uh, read hand contents pulse, not hold, otherwise it's going to subtract however many ticks it takes to push this into the machine. Um, and this one's actually going to be unconditional. So we're going to figure out all of our conditions before we set the requests here. And it's actually going to be these conditions right here. Um, we're just going to say if Arcosphere Lambda greater than average, if Arcosphere Omega greater than average, if Arcosphere Z, Xi, I didn't actually look up how to pronounce this yet, is less than average, and if Arcosphere Theta less than average, output one green for each of those, and then this one's going to say if green equals four. Then we're going to pulse the Arcosphere Lambda and Omega request into... Uh, into this chest right here. That squiggly line is gamma. This one? What does gamma look like? Uh, th this one. It's a... Uh, it's... Is it the opposite of lambda? No, it doesn't look quite like an upside down lambda. Lambda. Never mind, it's a Z. How do I pronounce it? Actually, let me look this up. Now. Okay. Or is, is it going to assume we're talking about uh, Xixin? Yeah. Are they different pronunciations? It's pronounced Kasai? Kasai. Z letter. Greek alphabet. Xi or Kasai. Okay. Let me just unmute this for a second. Can I click on that? Does it have a little... sound thing. Not that I can see. Never mind. Okay. So it would be nice if I could just keep the layout here and just edit the circuitry a little bit. So we're going to remove that. Um, we're going to... Copy this here. It's an L like eagle. It's like if you wrote... If you let it rotate the word seek. Keys... Okay. Uh, and then connect this here. That's pretty much it. That should be it. I can probably squeeze this in somewhere a little more convenient. Maybe. That's pretty, that, that's relatively neat. Uh, and we won't need that combinator on all of these. Okay. So... Just in case I completely mess this up, we'll have a little backup here. And... 
and I need to remove that, remove that, remove that. Alright, let's move those spiders a little bit. So, alright, first thing I'm going to do is change, uh-oh, it's fine, we'll pick, we'll pick it all up. I'm just going to get rid of and change these wires. Oops. Uh, is that bad? Probably. And we need to change these to output green signal. There should be two for any given one of these. Uh, Zeta. Phi. That's Gamma. I think we already did Gamma, didn't we? Uh, Omega? Was Omega over here? Yeah, it was. Theta. And... Theta. Lambda. We've already got Lambda, it's in the first one. And that just leaves... Epsilon. Whoops. Uh, Epsilon and Omega. Okay. And apart from this constant combinator here, these should always be the same. That's a lot of combinators. Uh, we need to connect like so. The four green signals that must all be met before this thing will activate. And then I'll just switch this off for now. Copy that across. Switch that back on. And now we need to change all of these. Xi and Gamma. Oh, I'm mispronouncing it again, aren't I? Gamma. Switch that on. Keys and Zeta. Zeta. You can see the symbols as well. This, these two aren't in order of the signals. Neither are these two. Uh, lambda and theta. Theta and epsilon. Did I switch those on? Uh, Zeta and Phi. Switch on. Two to go. 
phi gamma phi gamma and last but not least epsilon omega all right what the what the everything in the request chest how did this happen <laughs> Uh, well then. Let me just go ahead and check that the set requests on all of these is empty. Fantastic. And we'll go ahead and pick those up. I'm going to get put back into the buffer chests. Some of them are out of action over there. Circuits can be done as you need it. Uh, yes. Oh my god, maybe I don't want to get to this part of the game. Uh... To be clear, we just made it significantly more complicated, just so that we can uh, have fewer arcospheres out of circulation. Um, there's definitely a simpler solution to this. Um, it's just not as effective when we've got so few arcospheres. Also, Um, I kind of want these to be a lower priority. Like, like, this is the problem that we're solving right now. These are the machines that we use to swap two types of, uh, two arcospheres for two other types. Oh, that's, that's a lot. Um... And the problem is, when we're requesting just one Arcosphere here, Arcosphere Phi, we've actually got two Arcosphere Phi's in here as well. So that's three Phi's that are out of circulation, uh, which is a problem when we need them to rebalance into other types of Arcospheres. Um, I think the first step isn't working here right now, though. So what's wrong with it? Um, we need four of these conditions to be met on any one of these. I think we just... I think we just don't meet the requirements for any one of these recipes. And that's a problem. So we've got... What, what do we have? Can't reach. We've got 21 Zetas, 19 Lambdas, 7 uh, Gammas, and 9 Phi's. That seems... Seems like they have a tendency to converge. Zeta, Lambda, Gamma, and Phi. So I'm sure we don't have like a recipe that turns Zeta and Lambda into something. For example. We've got Lambda Omega, uh, was it called? Cassi Gamma, Cassi Zeta, Lambda. Are we actually going to have to use these inversion recipes as well? Lambda, Cassi, Epsilon, Phi. Uh, or Zeta, Theta, Gamma. We can't, anyway. 
do I actually need to... I was thinking of doing this anyway, but... Alright, let's get rid of these requests. And I'm just hoping and not expecting... Uh... That if I take these out. We're gonna have enough of something. I, it looks like it's all the same as what we already have. What do we got? Yeah, we've only got four types already. I think the inversions are required, I'm just not sure why anymore. Hmm. Well, uh, we've already painted ourselves into a corner in the more arcospheres. What arcosphere do you want in the end of research? Uh, well, we need to balance them so that we have some of each type of arcosphere. Uh, and I want to have... I hate to have to do this every time, but I think I should do the same thing for the Arcosphere inputs for these things. So that we don't have, like, three uh, Epsilons just sitting here, for example. And I want it to be a lower priority. Um, like, uh, we could just make sure that we've got... I mean, the, e the, the super easy way I could do it is, like... If Arcosphere Lambda is greater than 10, 5 or something, then we can request Arcosphere Lambda here. Hey, Scale the Summit. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. In the beginning, all the Arcospheres lived in harmony, indeed. Don't the Arcosphere inputs for crafting also change randomly? Uh, yes, but these recipes here don't change. Um, they just convert two arcospheres to two other arcospheres. Um, but this one, for example... Wait, where is it? Oh, this recipe up here. Um, randomly switches. We actually just need one more arcosphere to get another four. The inputs stay the same, the outputs just change. Indeed. How are Arcospheres? Uh, Veldak, you tell me. <laughs> These are the Arcospheres that we have right now. Uh, and it just so happens that we can't convert any of them. We've got 23 Zetas, uh, 12 Phi, 10 Gamma, and 21 Lambda. Yeah. Uh, if I'd known that it could end up like this so easily, I would have put some very strict limitations. I mean, I did just set the request to one of each type of Arcosphere over here, but um, what I should have done... I may not need the memory cell, it, it may not need to be as strict up here, but I think what I should do is... Um, I'll just add another... Well, no, I won't add another chest. We'll have a constant combinator. And we'll have a decider combinator. And we're going to... Always request one Naquium plate and one significant data. And then, under certain conditions, I could do each greater than x output each. Uh, where is each? Oh, derp. 
each greater than we'll be super safe for now let's say 10 and I'm just gonna add pylons to get the wiring across so we'll consider what's in these chests to be all of our arcospheres um Wait, that doesn't work. Uh, yeah, I definitely need two decider combinators for this. I just wanted to keep it down to one combinator if I could, but that doesn't really work. Unless I have, like, a, ne a constant combinator here with a negative for all of the arcospheres we don't want um, in this machine. But I think that is, in a way, more excessive. So we're going to have Epsilon and Phi. Epsilon. If it's greater than 10, output 1 Epsilon. Actually, what would be... The maximum that goes into these two machines is 2. Right. Now that we've got this complicated system that just makes sure we don't have, like, one lambda here and two lambda in here sitting idle. So one lambda here, one lambda here, or some or something. Um, so I'm pretty sure greater than five is overkill um, for safety. So if we've got more than five of some type of arcosphere... We can set a request for that here. How much overlap is there here, though? We've got Zeta Omega, zero overlap. Lambda's, uh, Lambda and how do you pronounce it again? Keys? Uh, Theta Gamma Epsilon Phi. All right. There seems to be no overlap here. Bye. Okay. So if we've got a certain amount available... Oh, five is an overkill because we'll have one here and two here when this thing isn't working. So that'll leave... That'll actually only leave two spare, which is our minimum to keep this going. Okay. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing over here, except with different inputs. C. Hashtag learning, indeed. You're on track, everybody got it this way. I'm sure. Theta and gamma. It really does take a few too many combinators just to just to ensure we don't have arcospheres sitting idle in the inputs. Um, in fact, like I could make this more complicated. Uh so that we don't need as many arcospheres to make it all work. But considering we've already got 44, 54, 60, 66. Really messed up here. Um, yeah, 66 should be enough to keep it all balanced. Um, but I wasn't careful enough about what I put into these machines. I thought it would sort itself out. Or maybe, um... Maybe while I was messing with this, these machines took stuff, and that's why it got so bad. Either way.
Okay. So we've got plenty of phi's, so we're bringing a phi over here. Um, and unfortunately that is going to bring another one and another one. Unless I, again, make a memory cell just to deal with that. We need a memory cell and a pulse generator. And this thing to decide when that condition is met. That's a bit more of a hassle than I want to bother with. That's weird. Why have we got a fine here? Oh, because I copy-pasted this without finishing updating them all? Lambda and C? And this one is Zeta and Omega. Actually, just to ensure things are where they're supposed to be. So I would love to move all of these down a tile because I messed up the perfect square here. Um, how about bigger dollies this much? And then cut. And paste. And then we just have one wire that we need to reconnect. Cool. Oh. Requests are rung at the combinator. Was that up here? That thing that I fixed? So we definitely need some more Arcospheres. Um, that should get things going now, though. Should we launch with just 15 collectors? I think we probably should. Do recipes go random? That's perverse, <laughs> indeed. Hughes Mike, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, just to speed things up a bit, make it a little bit easier, I might... Go pick up those collectors myself. And I'll just bring them directly to this ship and then force it to launch. Why does this one have a random accumulator? I think I was probably testing something. Um, it's not a bad thing if it does have some accumulators, though. Nah, uh, let's just remove that. So yeah, to recap, uh, we've got four different conditions that have to be met. These two have to be above average, uh, and we pretend the average is a bit higher as well. 
with this uh, constant combinator here. These two have to be below average. If all four of those output a green signal, this combinator here uh, will output everything, which includes two uh, two types of arcosphere that are the input for this recipe. That goes to a pulse generator, so that instead of a constant signal, uh, we just get one tick. The reason we're doing one tick is because it goes to a memory cell. Uh, so this thing does a loop forever, holding on to whatever value it received. We take what's on the memory cell and set requests for this requester chest. So once these conditions are met, uh, we pulse these two into the memory cell, set requests for those two types of, uh, those two arcospheres, and then the instant the uh, inserter picks it up to put it into the machine, uh, one tick later we're going to be outputting negative whatever it picked up, uh, and then one tick after that uh, this memory cell is going to subtract whichever type of arcosphere was just picked up. Uh, and hopefully, and I would kind of expect this, we're not going to get the bots delivering another lambda to this chest in the two ticks, I think. Two or three ticks, depending on how this works. Um, that it takes... Hopefully this is effectively instantly, and we don't have the bots scheduled to deliver another lambda the moment this one's picked up. Okay, where are we? Take the... Oh wait, we've got a train delivering Naquim cubes, actually. Uh, 34 cubes. We can get another four Arcosphere Collectors. Why don't we wait for the train then? We've already gone through all of the plate that's been delivered here. Um, but we haven't... We haven't received all of the cubes that we're going to. That's going to be up to luck. If this chest happens to be evaluated at the wrong time, the bots will get a delivery task. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've seen them respond very quickly and not as quickly to requests. Um, I'm just hoping it takes them, like, at least three ticks. Uh, maybe that's not too much to ask. We definitely can't go faster than that. Um, even in the worst case scenario, we've at least reduced the number of lambdas that would be sitting idle. Um, the worst case before was three. Um, and I was going to say the worst case here would be two, but that's not correct. Because we're not going to set requests for lambda in the first place unless all of these conditions are met. So we're going to request omega as well. So whenever we go from no requests here to requesting something, uh, it will be requesting both Lambda and Omega, and they will both be available. So we'll get at least one recipe done whenever we do this. So I think we've reduced, worst case, I think we've reduced the number of either type of Arcosphere that could be stuck here from three to one. Not every chest is evaluated each tick, yeah. But I've never seen, uh, for example, 
Uh, I've never seen LTN schedule something in one tick. Uh, and I'm hoping it's a bit like that with the bots. Do we have any more cubes here? Nope. Um, well, that's pretty good. Let's maybe take... Let's take our 19 Arcosphere Collectors for a ride. And get out of the robot network so they don't steal from us just yet. Uh, let's not walk through this one either. And we want to deliver it here. No, I tapped left or something. But are they really expensive enough to even bother with this? Um, maybe? It's an interesting challenge anyway. I think the more important thing that I didn't do in the first place is limit the arcospheres that go into um, our actual recipes. Like, we, we have to have this as a higher priority. Buffalo Kittens, thank you for the follow. Uh, Prime Sub, actually. Much appreciated. Thank you. Arcospheres are very expensive, but you never lose them. This is true. Uh, we do get diminishing returns for them, though. We are about... If it weren't for the diminishing returns, we'd be about to just about double our Arcospheres. Um, but it is a little bit more complicated than that. At first we got five Arcospheres for each Arcosphere Collector. Uh, it was all, it was definitely already down to four when we were doing our first 14. Alright, let's send our ship. Trying to have no idle Arcospheres is relatively unnecessary, but balancing them is everything. Yeah. I think the reason that we ended up in trouble here is just because... Uh, silly me, I thought requesting just one of whichever type of Arcosphere up here uh, wouldn't cause a problem. Maybe LTN would be a good way to use Arcospheres. It, instead of having these get used in block, we could... We could have a priority system with LTN. But it would come down to the same logic, though. We only export them when we've got greater than X of a type of Arcosphere. You can see your Arcosphere returns in the Informatron? Oh, as in the diminishing returns. Arcospheres. Arcospheres found near Stardew. Nine Arcospheres. Fourteen collectors launched. Deep interstellar void, 36 out of 14. Wait, do we not get any more after f four? No, that's not. Wait, what? Arcospheres are found by launching Arcosphere Collector. Repeated launches, diminishing returns. You might get better returns by launching from a different asteroid fields. But what does it mean by 9 Arcospheres slash 14 collectors launched? Is that our estimate for how many we get from each collector? Because I'm pretty sure we only got 5 from the first one. You launched 14 collectors and got 9 from the Stardew pool. 
Oh. But I haven't launched any collectors from... Deep Interstellar Void. Is that actually a place? Uh... No? What? How do I even go to the deep interstellar void? And I'm pretty sure we got significantly more than 9 from Stardew. We got like 40 or something. Wait, didn't we get, uh... 45, that might be what we actually got. It seems to think some of the ones that we got from Stardew came from whatever this is. We've only launched 14 and they were all from Stardew. As I understand it, regions can be over-farmed. You have to switch regions, perhaps launch them from a ship. That is a nuisance. And yeah, launching them from a ship uh, would probably be by far the easiest way to go about it in the future. Does it ever get down to less than... Does it ever get down to zero, or do we always get at least one Arcosphere for each collector? I think it means you get diminishing returns in total, and also diminishing returns in each asteroid field. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. Um, what's our ETA? About 10 minutes, I think. 8.40 before it gets there. It's going to take a while to actually launch all the probes. Getting zero f spheres from a launch is possible. No! I would like to design a ship that just has the uh, launcher on it. That's a lot simpler. That's much more elegant than what we've got here for the perp I was going to say for the purpose of arcospheres but I guess that would be true of interstellar void probe data as well we could have just built one type of ship that carries a space probe rocket silo in the first place uh, assuming we had the hull integrity to do it at the time I think it's also possible to get one from some launches after that, so the first zero doesn't mean a complete stop. Yeah, I half expected that. Um, let's peek in on Electra. Fantastic. We're about to upgrade our beam emitter significantly. In fact, I don't really have that much room for it right now. How much scaffolding do we have left? Uh, about 4,000. Alright. How about we add one more... ...block. You know what would have been easier if I'd put the rail construction pylon not where I want the pylon substation? Chip could construct and deconstruct it. Wait, what? You can power the launcher using only your ship, yes. That's what I had in mind the first time I did Naquium mining, but... Uh, I don't like that iteration half as much as what came after it. Uh, still a pretty neat concept, I guess. 
Um, we could use this spot here. In fact, we could probably... How big is the silo? Space Pro Rocket Silo. Uh, nine by nine. This thing's 13 by 13. It would actually fit here, I think. Except we wouldn't be able to have our energy shields, that's a problem. I don't think we're going to copy-paste our existing uh, build for this. In fact, this ship really doesn't need to be fast, um, because... It, it's it's just not going to launch very often. Even in, if we, uh, even if we crank up, that's a lot of extra Argus Fizz collectibles all of a sudden. Uh, even if we really crank up our throughput later on, um, the ship is not going to need to be that quick. But then again, um, we're going to want it to keep going to separate destinations, uh, some of which are very far away, to get more Argus Spheres. So, maybe it should be fast. Uh, what are we... The launcher isn't... The launcher isn't what? How do I... Open thread. I can't see what that was referring to. I've started a game with my friend, and we are now past bots, but holy cow, there's a lot of research. Uh, and the items you need to craft... A lot higher than vanilla. Yeah, definitely. You can also resupply it from a fast ship if you can make it fast. Launcher isn't placeable on spaceship floor. No, where's your character? It's in this spider. Master of my fate, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Pink pajamas, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Uh, let let me see if I can confirm the horrible truth. Silo. I think we've got one here. Cannot build on spaceship floor. This is terrible. The horror. Okay. Um, I guess we're probably just going to make a more refined version of this thing then. Um, so that we can just copy-paste it wherever we want. Alright, well, the first step is to build a ship. Um... I think I would like to stick with the beam receiver design, if I can. But it makes it a bit hard. We've got more than enough energy from this ship to run the silo, right? Uh, let's have a look. Max consumption, 36 megawatts. That's not even... That's not even a slither of what this thing can do. You have to place the silo right next to the ship instead, the horror? Yes. Terrible.
It means I have to make an outpost if I want to automate it for any amount of time. Or I could make a big ship that's going to launch lots of uh, Arcosphere collectors in one go. If I don't want to make an outpost like this to automate a bunch of trips. But then we have to have all of the Arcosphere collectors up front um, when I perform the actions to make all of that happen. How much power do we have here? Uh, we have a spare 15 gigawatts. Still got some scaffolding here. We can do one more. Um, let me see if the bots can... I don't think they can. Swap that out for a radar. And put a supercharger here. And then I'll just remove these solar panels so we've got lots of room here. How long are you playing this seed? Uh, yes. Uh, one month. And some change. You have to place the silo right next to the ship, the horror, indeed. Um... It just makes it that much more work to automate it. It doesn't exactly make it more difficult, it just makes it more busy work. We still haven't scanned this thing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's the edge. Cool. So from the center to that corner, that's our radius. All right, then. Uh, let's start with lots of spaceship floor. I think I'll go for... Well, it depends on the size of the ship. I suppose it really doesn't have to be a big ship then, since we're not, since we're not putting a silo on it. Um, pretty much the smallest en uh, energy beam receiver ship, or we could even do nuclear power for this one. We could literally just copy the player ship. Well, we could have a bit more room for some chests for, uh, in that case. Come to think of it, the player ship might actually be perfect for this, because... Oh, I need to empty that. I did make those purple chests already. Um, can we... Put a roboport, like, here, I guess. Um, because we want a fast ship with, what is this, 40 megawatt plus 0% neighbor bonus? It should be receiving a neighbor bonus. I guess it has to be cooking fuel at the time. Well, let's say this is 80 megawatt just to be safe. Um... We only need 40 to run this. And we know this is enough power. Where's our ferry ship? Arcosphere ferry. Um, I probably overdid it 
by keeping the same chests here. Yeah, we're massively underutilizing uh, the number of containers we have here. Then again, um, because of the diminishing returns, we kind of have to... We only got five Arcospheres per collector to start with. So if we assume we need five stacks per Arcosphere collector... Um, well, we also need to bring Space Probe Rockets. If we bring nine Arcosphere Collectors and nine Space Probe Rockets per chest, uh, we know we've got more than enough storage to return with our loot. How big can you build a starship? Yeah, there's infinite research for it, although it gets crazy expensive. So if I were to keep the exact same design here and just cram in a few more chests, keep it under the hull stress. Can we improve on this while we're at it? Well, we'll probably have to have a Robopot. We can put that there. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm pretty sure we can easily go over our hull stress. Um without changing the shape of this at all. Yeah. So I might just use this design. Overall throughput of uranium fuel cells is going to be minuscule, I think. Alternatively, how small could I make a beam receiver ship? I'm actually curious about that. Um, I think we'll be stealing from this design. Well, the thing is... We're not going to need this much power. 20 megawatts. It was like 36 megawatts to run this thing with speed modules, right? But we didn't also use a beacon. I could add a beacon to it and it would go even faster with less power consumption. Um... How much smaller would it be if we use some of these? Significantly? Maybe it was a mistake to use the high temp turbine generators for this. They're just so much bigger than we need. a bit weird, but maybe I don't hate this. Uh, 
and we know we can do four engines and what it takes to support four engines on this many condenser turbines. We could maybe... I don't love the shape of these tanks though. Don't know why you can't flip an engine. Yeah, it kind of works. I don't love needing those two pipes there. for the same shield projector design from before, if I can remember how that goes. Something like this, and then this comes down here. probably stand to steal from myself for this part. Mm, this got extra wide because we had even more engines. This is not looking like that small of a ship. Um, how much smaller is this, really? It's slightly thinner and like 10% shorter. Yeah, I don't think I like this. I think if I want to build it smaller, I'm going to use nuclear. So probably this design right here. We could still try and iterate on it. The trouble with nuclear is that's four chests going to waste immediately. And even if we use uh, antimatter reactors, the same applies. We could try building a steamship. What if we take in 5,000 degrees steam? Um, we would need a high temp turbine generator to consume it. And then we need... Uh, Technically three, but we could get away with two if we don't want the whole gigawatt from it. Except we'd be using regular turbines, maybe? How far would we actually get... 
Oh, also, what's the rate here? Uh, 214, 215, 500 degree steam per second. These can consume 60. These are actually faster at consuming steam. Regular turbines are more efficient. That's true. And then we don't have to deal with getting rid of the water afterwards. 60 per second gives us 5.8. As opposed to 80 per second gives, gives us 5.82. except that we get 99% of the water back with a condenser turbine. Um, there's no point flashing the water back to steam unless we just really want to get rid of it. In which case, steam turbine. Um, but we need four turbines just to use up the output. Oh, this also outputs water directly. So we do have to deal with water. Uh, we could use... We could use a bunch of the energy that we get from the one gigawatt high temp turbine generator to flash water back to 500 degree steam. Um, I think I can only handcraft one of these. And we normally don't carry them. Uh, 500 degrees, 200 joules per degree Celsius. Oh, it's also slower to make it a higher temperature. So what's our rate? Um, how much water do we get out of this? 800 per second, plus the 80 from this side. Uh, this only does 46 per second, <laughs> if we're flashing it back to 500. We could send it back to 165 degree steam, um, if we really want to get rid of the water that badly. Uh, but I'm pretty sure as soon as it drops below 500 degrees, we get... And it will drop immediately below 500 degrees. We get hardly any power out of this. Um, but this thing is already the vast minority of power that can be supplied from the high temp turbine generator setup. Um, we could just store the water as it gets output. That might make things easier. The power generated scales linearly. So you're not losing anything apart from what the machine uses. The engaged with enemies alert is now useless. Take a look. It's full of ships shooting down asteroids. Yes. Uh, where is it? We've, we have many spaceships engaged with the enemy. Um, let's say we start with a bunch of 5k steam. Uh, that connect to water. That's unfortunate. Let's pretend every bit of steam that we input, we're going to store as water. 
afterwards. Actually, we can do it like this. Not quite like that, though. Um, we need three condenser turbines if we want to get the whole gigawatt out of this. Two is more than enough, I think. And that way we can be symmetrical. I guess we don't have a unified water storage here at the moment, though. That's unfortunate. Um, it just had to be too long for the underground pipes. Uh, alright, fine, we'll move this down a tile. And... Uh, and then we need to connect this like so, actually. That doesn't look too bad. We will need... oh. It stole my... It stole my, uh... Electric boiler. Okay. Um, engines. Can we do this? One tail short. The ore smasher? Yes. It's been there a while. Uh, this goes here, this goes here. I guess we don't necessarily need four engines, but yes we do. In fact, we can do it like that. This is looking a bit familiar. Spaceship door can go here. Um, and then we need some defenses. We'll probably have an easier time laying out our shields. I might remove that tank so that we can have something like this. Then again, it might not be necessary. Uh, the beam receiver is actually exactly as wide as this, so I'm probably going to go want to go one tile in. Yeah, that's that little gap. I think that's the exact same gap that we end up with. on most of our ships. Yep. So I want to tuck I, I want to tuck that in by one tile, so let's remove that. Oops. That looks kinda neat. Maybe we could do... Nah, that's fine. Uh, 
like so. And then we could have walls looking a little something. Where are we going to fit our console? How much steam do we actually need, though? 5,000 degree steam should get us pretty far, but I really don't have a baseline for just how much we need. I want to go for a test drive with 100k, I think. We could put a console here, RoboPort here, some solar panels don't fit, unfortunate. Um, maybe the panels could go like here. Ooh, ship designing, indeed. Nope, I am not here. Good to see you again. Oh, well, you're welcome. Hope you're doing well. We should also be launching some Arcospheres right about now. Collectors, that is. And indeed we are. Uh, this is actually our... Oh. This is nowhere near our last Collector. <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, but we've only picked up five Arcospheres. How many did we bring? Like 19, I think. Uh, so I think this is our third launch. So we've, we're averaging, averaging 2.5 Arcospheres um, per launch at the moment, I think. Doing fine. How's the screen going? Stream going for hiccups? Uh, none, as far as I'm aware. Uh, do you mean like bitrate or just like problems in Factorio? How slow the rocket goes out there? Yes, fortunate. I think we've seen this shape before. Mm, I think I'd like that to go back further actually, but this is fine so far. Uh, where is our floor deconstruction planner? Any problems, really? Um, not so much. Okay. Uh, we need some 5k steam. And I know it got taken back to the mall. The, uh... Uh, electric boiler that I made. Where's my remote? Let's go pick it up. In fact, how many boilers do we happen to have lying around here? 156. I must have automated it. And then when the machine gets around to making some, it makes a lot because it's ridiculously fast. Uh, okay. Why don't we request a stack of those? So we're actually going to be outputting water um, when this ship goes back to, like, its home base. 
I wish I could fit a tank in there. If we're going to have four tanks in, we need four tanks out. It's looking a bit... uncomfortable. Are you doing automatic recipe change in these assemblers in space? Yes. Um, so we've got a bunch of combinators saying these are the things we want. Uh, we've got the robot network telling us what we've actually got, subtracting that from that. Um, and then we've got a timer so that we only change recipes like every 30 seconds. And then at each of these, we've got three combinators that say... Uh, Anything greater than zero output, anything input count, that gives us an arbitrary one of the set of signals that's being passed through here. Uh, and then we say... Uh, basically... Subtract that signal. Well, send it to the machine, but also subtract that signal from the set that we took this signal from. Um, so we actually need three combinators to make that happen, just to pick off one signal each time. Um, but that's how we have multiple machines working on different recipes from this list at the same time. Um, the rest of the wiring is basically... A uh, recipe combinator gets the ingredients that we need, sets requests here. The green wire connected to the same chests is a blacklist of stuff that we don't want to dynamically set requests for. Those are all down here, just static high throughput uh, requests on these requester chests. Um, and then we've got some stuff to take away whatever is not supposed to be in this chest after the recipe switches. Alright, let's head back here with our boilers. Have a play with this prototype. It's also a mod. Yeah, the mod is called Crafting Combinators lets you set recipes on a machine. I don't like the shape that I'm going to have to go with. Um, to get a water output here. Well, let's leave that one as it is and see if we can do better on this end. It's one off being able to fit like this. What if I... Hmm. What if I push all of these up one tile? That might even look better. And then... This can go here, this can go here. That goes there, that goes there. Yeah, I think I like that better with the shielding. That seems pretty good. Alright, so we got 1k steam in, plus 200 with this pipe. Uh, 1k, sorry, 100k steam uh, water that can come out. Um, I know we don't get the full amount out, but that's fine. Unfortunately, uh, this hasn't worked out well for supplying the steam in the first place. That's really awkward, actually. Unless we wanted to put the steam in at the front. Uh, 
feels a bit weird having the having a fluid resupplied from the front of the ship. If you were able to just say craft all the requests in Robo Network, I would have finished a lot of runs a lot earlier. Yeah. Uh there's there's a lot uh like okay, for comparison, doing a mall a bot mall without like crafting combinator, I didn't end up using it all, but this is the kind of thing it looks like. And then every time you want something new, you have to set the recipes, set requests manually, um, put some reasonable limits on it. Um, and in, for my tastes, preferably put request on the buffer chest for output. As opposed to um, if I want to add something up here, the main hassle is checking if I've already got it if there's some other problem, but I can literally just add a signal here to say well, this isn't going to do anything, but I could say make some Naquim ingots here, please. Pretty standard for flying vessels, resupplying from the front, maybe, but... Uh, I don't know if I like the shape that we're going to end up with for that. How big is this, really? Let's compare it to a rail block. It's fairly small. It's significantly shorter than this thing. We could definitely pump steam in the front of this. So steam, kept, uh, steam gets pumped in the front, unless I come up with something I like better. Um, unfortunately, we'd have to have this pipe go all the way up here to do that. I don't love the look of that, but I can probably live with it. We probably need like six to ten laser turrets. Make that twelve, I suppose. Although the more excess power consumption we have, the faster we go through our steam. Well, this is an experiment anyway. You can copy assemble a recipe and paste it into a requester chest, which helps. Yeah, although you do have to be careful with that sometimes, like, um, I forget if it was power armor, no, I think it was the Spidertron with vanilla. I copy pasted the recipe and it set the requests for certain things so high because it uh, bases the volume, uh, the amount of what you're requesting on how fast the machine is. Uh, it set the request so high that all of the stuff couldn't fit in the chest. So that was a that was a little excessive. Um, we've got water here. Let's run it uh, this way. And we need some electric boilers. I imagine we'll need a few to get 5,000 degree steam at a decent pace. Uh, this is only 27 per second, and we need 100k. Uh, that's gonna take an hour to recharge. 
Um, can we can we be a bit more aggressive with this? Just a tad, a tad smidge. Alright, so water goes here. It's a fiver, I think. Seven. It's fine. And here as well. We're going to need some three Bs. Two, three, four. Time to make a rail block of electric boilers? Maybe. Uh, wow. I thought it wasn't working, but it's just that slow. Uh, and I'm just going to confirm this doesn't work with beacons. Can we not just place this? Uh, yeah, it doesn't work with beacons. I guess it would make a lot more sense uh, if we're going to do this, like as more than just a one-off experiment, um, I guess it would make a lot more sense instead of having electric boilers to have energy beaming. And we'll use a high temp heat exchanger. 562 steam per second. As opposed to, it's like five times as fast as what we just built. And we don't have to consume electricity to, uh, for that. We can just consume the heat directly. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's so much faster that I might make it right now. Once this water runs out. Space elevator hype, indeed. Root class, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, speaking of hype, what's our rate on Vitamelange now? 288 core fragments per second. That seems good. Uh, 1250 sec. It's actually 20, about 20, 21 minutes to load one of these ships. I bet we didn't need the second ship after all. But uh, that's okay. How is Vitamelange looking on Nalvis, I wonder? Um, we've still got lots of core fragments here. Oh? Hey, I think we did it. Let's have a look at our production statistics. Uh, next. We, um, ingot. Auto save. Heyo, indeed. Cobalt, Ethan. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, is auto save going to start? 
This is because we scanned that planet, isn't it? What's a sleepy, hungry T-Rex called? A sleepy, hungry T-Rex. A, quest that, a question that just came to my mind, how big is your save? Last I checked, uh, 560 meg. Tyrannosaurus snacks. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, um, it just got bigger because we're scanning a planet so that we can glaive the biters away. So we can confirm hostile extinction. And then we can trim surface back down. Okay. Uh, there are some dips still. But the... That's interesting. Over the last half hour, we've had... Is this a repeating pattern? Big dip? Medium dip? No, it's a bit different. Big dip... Less big dip, smaller dip, smaller dip. I'm pretty sure the line is trending upwards. Um, oh yeah, we are catching up. We've got our vitalic acid now, otherwise there wouldn't be more than one train load here. 6.6 .6, uh, stacks in one of our 24 chests means that we've got a train load. We've got more than two. Probably three. Just that alone tells me we're not bottlenecking on Vitalic Acid here anymore. Um, so it seems like we're consistently making Macrotite with our two blocks here. Uh, that being... A gargantuan 4.62 ingots per second. Fantastic. What about plate? I feel like plate's going to give us a, a better feel for how much we've actually got. Uh, 800 per minute. 400 per minute over the last hour. 800 per minute over the last 10 minutes. 860 over the last minute. And over 900 for a moment there. In the last five seconds, 1.1k per minute is our peak. Um, it varies because we're balancing it with the ingots coming out. Uh, but yeah, that is really good to see. Push that bottleneck further. And just randomly not seeing this ship here, that's actually fantastic. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We're backed up on Naquim ingots. Uh, that's why our ingot ship just happens to be in orbit. We didn't catch it at a, at a random moment that it was delivering. We are actually backed up on Naquim ingots all the way to... Uh, all the way back to here. Absolutely fantastic. Um, this doesn't look right, though. It was supposed to be balanced so that we get the same number of stacks of each. No, it's the same amount of each. Um... Over here we balanced it so we get the same number of stacks, but not with the actual loader, uh, I think. So I need to put a limit on... I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to say I need to hurry up and put a limit on Naquim ingots. Okay, um, we need a construction spider. I think we have a single... Didn't we have one construction spider lying around somewhere? I, I guess we'll just grab the usual group of them. Also, let's send the deconstruction spiders back to the mall. So what I'm going to do here... Um,
Hmm. Maybe I don't need to worry about this. No, we do need to do something. Because ingots unconditionally make their way down here. So... We're doing the exact same amount of each into these chests. No, wait. We're just balancing each in the chests. Over here, we are not making plate unless... We're pretending there's twice as many ingots. So ingots go straight to here. We multiply ingots by one. That was kind of a weird way to do it. We didn't have to do that. But yeah, this is... 6.4k ingots that comes to these inserters. And then we say if ingot greater than plate... So we actually have to have twice as many ingots as plate before we say, uh, it, like because of the stack size, we pretend there's twice as many ingots before we make more plate. But we're unconditionally letting ingots flow to here. So... Well, for one thing, we could definitely prioritize uh, the splitter. In fact, I'm surprised I didn't do that before. Or I probably did it to start with, but then we weren't getting ingots or something. There's never enough space to allow double-sided loading of the train. Uh, we could. Oh, there's even enough. Right, I misread it. Okay. Just got a... Maybe just a belt blockade once the ingots reach a certain number. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I can also stop the inserters from picking up ingots um, very easily. Like, once ingot is greater than x output... If, if ingot greater than x output ingot input count, and that goes to our... Um, our filter inserters. That's what I was going to do originally, and I think I will do that, but I'm also glad I prioritized that ingots saturate this belt. Such a strange way that I did this combinator before. I could have just done times two and then green wire directly to all of these inserters. Oh no, wait, I see why I didn't do that. Because we want to read the amount of Naquium plate on the green wire without multiplying that by two. Yeah, this makes perfect sense, actually. Okay, cool. So, if we had... Uh, we've got 16 chests. If we have 24 stacks of ingot, that is 240 times 16, 3,840. And here are our spiders. We need a couple of decider combinators. Right about here. And we're going to say, since it shows the ingot on the left there, I'll start with ingot. Uh, if ingot greater than or equal to that, 
output input count ingot, or even one would accomplish the same job. Actually, no, it wouldn't, because we're doing the negative average spitting out from this. Uh, and then something similar here, if uh, Naqueen plate is greater than or equal to 7680, Naqueen plate. So that positive signal is going to overwhelm the negative average. So we're definitely going to get a positive, and therefore blacklist, um, for either of those resources, if they reach their limits, which they haven't yet. I was sitting here thinking, how did he get the trains to move in slow motion? <laughs> yes, that's how that's how you do it. This is a big save, indeed. Uh, it just got significantly bigger because we are scanning this planet we're almost well we're getting close to finished um we need to pump more juice into uh into our beam transmitter here what do we got another 15 gigawatts almost Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and that's our beam going a bit faster and more powerful now. So it's going to take a while. Uh, I mean, we'll keep adding power to it so it goes faster and faster. Um, but it's going to take a while for this thing to clear the biters. But I still find it preferable to making an extinction bomb. How much more scaffolding and or... Oh. Twelve. Yes. Okay, so we've pretty much used up all of our scaffolding for this trip. Okay. Once the bots get back... Uh, I was going to say I'll send the, uh, send the ships home, but that's not quite right. I want to deconstruct these robot things along the way. Since my last project, I'm slowly starting to hate Jason, J-S-O-N. Uh, did we empty this? Yes, we did. Where's, where's my player character? Here we go. I'm just going to manually pick these up one at a time. It actually says 0, 0.0 steam. But it's showing the icon. Whatever. Let's just get rid of that. Uh, so, we want to put down a... High temperature turbine... Oh, sorry, high temp heat exchanger. And a beam receiver. It's going to take a minute to heat this up, though. Um, but yeah, I think this will be a much better way to resupply... Uh, if we are going to consistently use these steamships, uh, if it if it turns into more than just an, an experiment, um, I think this will be a much better way to heat it up. I don't suppose we have some spares over here. We've got six gigawatts to spare. 
which beam was it? This one. Do we happen to have nothing, actually? Okay. Good to know. Um, I was going to say I could also move a couple of these injectors, but not so much, actually. I Oh, this thing needs to move as well. Glad I checked on that. And I kind of shouldn't, but I'm going to borrow this one. So we can warm that up that much faster. It's already almost 10% of the way there. Okay, that becomes pylon substation. That becomes flat solar panel. Shouldn't be using it. Oh, that's Jason again. Alright, uh, what should we do while that warms up? Depending on how this go- oh. Uh, depending on how this goes, I might actually start using steam this way. I didn't anticipate this. Um, the high temp turbine generator was running just because. Um, so let's make sure we output the water. Um, I don't really want to mess with that. So can we put this here? Where is this water coming from? Oh, I see. Hmm. Alright. I'm going to swap this out for a couple of regular pipes so that we can output this. This won't be a regular thing. This is just a prototype. But if it works out surprisingly well, Um, I might use this for a couple of things. So what's our hull stress? Probably pretty low. Like 500 or less? 658? Uh, what's this one? 535. Hmm. How much smaller can I really make this? Well, if I severely limit the speed so that we don't need shield projectors, uh, I could make it quite a bit smaller. I think. Don't know where I would fit the console if this was squeezed in like this. Probably about here. I guess it wouldn't be that much smaller. It's mostly the fact that we have the high temp turbine generator to build things around um, that makes this all so large. But it's still decently small for a ship that uses antimatter engines anyway. Alright. 1200 degrees. It's going to take a minute. So 
So I guess we actually did catch up on Vidamelange before we made that new outpost. However, I probably would like to have even more Naquitite. Since everything bottlenecks on that. What is this ship doing? Oh, it's waiting on 12 Naquitite to be taken away. And we've still got... How many bots do we have here? Uh, 500... Wait, there's room in these two robo-ports. Why do we have bots just hovering like this? Oh, because the chest got over... Okay, as long as that's working. Oh, that's right. The, the stack size for Vitamelange core fragments is 10 times as large as Naquitite. So we need way more bots um, for the same shape of ship to deal with the I.O. here. It's actually starting to make a case for belts coming out of the ship. But I would rather do that on a future playthrough where we have large containers. I'm pretty happy with this, actually. Look at that spray of Vitamelange core fragments. Fantastic. So if we make another block like this, uh, we go to 120 Vitalic Acid per second. We can definitely keep up with that based on these machines. We've got two blocks like this. But it looks like we're still short on Vitamelange Extract, actually. Which is weird, because we've got multiple train loads of Vitamelange Extract here. Uh, that is very strange indeed. Did I not set the requests here aggressively enough? 32k, that is four train loads. Stack size 50. That should definitely be enough. Don't tell me it's... Don't tell me it's just pure traffic jam. Um, how many trains are trying to pick up? We got yellow, 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 and picking up. So yeah, trains are constantly trying to pick up from here. I never anticipated needing this much throughput for Vidim Lange. Um, having this many stations at one block is a little bit problematic. There's so many trains. Well, we'll see how it goes for a while. Almost 2k degrees. A lot of traffic, yeah. Um, I think I forgot Electra for a second there. I was just cleaning up with the bot network stuff. This should become a Highland substation. And so should this one. needing this anymore for a while at least the bots should find their way 
back to the nearest robot network. Cool. Let's send these two back to Nervous Orbit. Whoops. And I think I might take a little break since my voice almost died. Let's fire up some words on the stream and pick up where we left off. Fantastic. Uh, it's still going to take quite a while to clear this place at this rate. We'll come back and add more solar panels and more beam injectors. And that'll double as getting our infrastructure ready for the solar system. Alright, screensaver, go. And we'll fire up words on stream in 30 seconds. And I'll be back in a few minutes. Have fun.
One more. One more. Fantastic. All right, let's continue with space exploration. Uh, and where were we? Oh, we've got uh, no steam, actually. Because this thing is still not at 5k. This was just from when we used the electric boilers. And the electric boilers are very slow. Still overlay, thank you. Good call. Um, and I should probably disable the preview there. We might get half a UPS out of that. Doesn't seem to matter. When I was using uh, Streamlabs OBS, it made a pretty big difference. Wait, what's that ship? Construction ship 1 and 2 are actually just leaving the solar system of Electra. I could help out Energy Glaive along a bit here. I think it can skip. I think I actually have to like turn it off and then choose coordinates again. Off. Autoglaive. Yeah, that's a little bit cheesy, I guess. The radius of that thing, though. Okay. Uh, we are at 3.4k degrees Celsius before we can play with our experimental steamship. Um, we're going to have 100,000 5k steam. Goes through high temp turbine generator. 500 degree steam that comes out is uh, going to be used up by condenser turbines. Is that going to block it? No, we've done this before. Um, because we don't need anywhere near the one gigawatt that we get out of this, this will work fine. Um, and then we're just going to output this to water, and instead of recycling it, reheating it, which would need a reactor, we're just going to store the water. Um, 
and output it when we get to our destination. Would a spaceship with some artillery guns perhaps be faster than the autoclave? We did make a spaceship with artillery guns, um, but it obviously has limited range, and depending on the planet, uh, it's going to use a ton of fuel every time. Where is that blueprint? Battleship. Here it is. Uh, so we've got this thing with 400 plus uh, artillery shells, a single nuclear reactor, a couple of turbine generators, and a single ion engine. Just enough to get it around interstellar. Um, and then it's surrounded by lasers. Although they don't do that much against biters. We can't put flamethrower turrets on a ship. So instead we, uh, we put this around the spaceship. Um, as soon as it lands. So it uses its own uh, robots to build walls around itself. You have to defend the ship, yeah. The spaceship walls aren't that strong, um, and considering that you can only have lasers, it's going to take damage um, if the spaceship is all that there is to defend itself. Um, but yes, it does work. You can put trains and therefore artillery wagons on a spaceship, and the artillery wagons do work uh, when you land the ship. 3.8k. I'm really eager to test this thing. Uh, what about our arcospheres? Can we play? Can we play with those yet? We're still launching. Wait, what? Oh yeah, we are still launching. I was gonna say. It looked like uh, this thing had been sitting here for a while, but we're actually on our last launch right now. Once this timer gets to 5,000, or 3,000, sorry, the ship's gonna come back automatically. It gets reset whenever these inserters swing, or when the ship first arrives. So how many Arcospheres did we get? 29. That's not that bad. If we look at the Informatron... I don't understand how... how this gets laid out. So we've collected 33 in total using... Uh, using the silo. Arcospheres found in deep interstellar... Wait, 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 what? Oh, there's no rocket inventory here. Okay, cool. We get to witness it automatically going back. Nice. Um, so where were we? So we found 33... We've found a lot more... No, we've launched 33 collectors... And I think we've found 59 in total. Um, uh, Arcosphere. All time. 74. Does that include the ones we just picked up out of a box? We've consumed 68. I think that means there's... Wouldn't that mean there's only six here? That's not right. Arcospheres found near star due 615. 59 in interstellar void. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. Uh, anyway, this thing will be back at Narvis orbit in a bit under 10 minutes game time. 
Hello, third try at space exploration. I think it's okay. My starter base and low tier base is kind of constructed. Nice. Good luck to you. Can you drive trains into spaceships? Yes, yes you can. Uh, in fact, spoiler alert, um, there is a place where, even if you didn't think of that yourself, uh, we find some ruins that heavily imply that we can drive trains into spaceships. Um, but yeah, you can definitely do it. I don't think it would be terribly uh, size efficient. Although the hull stress, uh, the container stress specifically, is going to go up less than it would if you had a chest in for each cargo wagon. That's crazy. Will you build something like this? I guess I could for the novelty of it. Um, I don't think it's going to be particularly optimal, functional, however you want to put it. Uh... I should probably get some antimatter stream in here before we're ready to launch, right? I can't just steal it from here. This would be a better way to do it. That doesn't line up at all. There we go. It's the same number. Oh, I got this wrong. Okay. Pipe missing, indeed. There we go. Um, so I imagine by the time we're full of 5,000 degrees steam, well, this is 562 per second. Uh, that's only going to take three minutes once this gets warm enough to fill this up. Although we do have... Uh, we've got about enough water to fill that up in one go, I think. Um, I guess let's put in a clamp. Just so that we can come back to the exact same spot. Uh, even though this is just a prototype. Uh, we want to get the water out anyway, and maybe the antimatter stream as well. Um, let's say 5,000. Constant combinator. Clamp right. And target left. Fantastic. It feels weird to to be just taking water out of a spaceship. Like we're trying to keep this completely empty. Hey, we got steam. Wait, what? Uh, it seems like we got a burst of steam, and then this got too cold after this thing consumed some heat. Whoa, that looks weird. That looks very weird. I've seen something like this before when we weren't even making steam, but still. Output one what? What the? Plus 0% neighbor bonus. 
Surely you can't get neighbor bonuses from energy beam receivers. Four nine seventy two, four nine seventy five. Low temperature. And we're over 5k here now. I'm surprised that we got a few thousand, actually, uh, hot steam before this was at 5,000 degrees. Do you have an early game mole for this mod? Uh, not that far ahead to use the one you posted. Oh, um, well, I could offer, if you're wanting to use the crafting combinator setup, I've got the smallest possible auto crafter. Well, it, it may be the smallest possible. It, it's approximately the, the simplest uh, auto crafter design right here. I'm pretty sure I put that. I, I may have posted that on the Discord. Um, why don't we have a look-see? Auto-crafter? No, I don't think we do. Uh, why don't we grab this blueprint book? Export. I don't think I have put this on Factorio prints. Print string go. Uh, let's go with this for a screenshot. And description. examples of auto crafters uh, title and what should I tag it circuit counter I guess Some blueprints in the book have no name. Don't care. Would be nice to get to explore the game more. Indeed. Uh, Alright, there we go. That is uh, this blueprint book right here. We've got various iterations of auto crafters. How much steam do we have? Oh, we're almost halfway full. How far should we try to go? Oh, we've got our antimatter stream at the same time. Fantastic. Let's go to, uh, let's say, why don't we just go to Vazanus for a first test drive? I will wait till we get 100k steam first. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, where are our construction ships? Heading for Nalvis Orbit, ETA, four minutes. Uh, let's double check on Penium since that's something we've been working on lately. Looking good. 218k Vitamelange core fragments casually in the ship. Very nice. And I imagine we haven't... Uh, oh. Ooh. Okay. Uh... We actually are dipping... We're actually bottlenecking on power. Um, 
So I think for the moment, we're going to remove some drills because they give diminishing returns anyway. That was definitely enough. Why don't we add half of these back and see what happens. And I might have to think about... I don't know where I'm going to fit it. I would, I would love to have... Oh, right. I forgot we have the high temp turbine generators. We don't need to build this thing again. Um... Unfortunately, this... It, it's an improvement, but it also suffers the same problem. Uh, where the heat doesn't quite get to the end of the heat pipes. If we're at full capacity. Um, but to supplement solar panels, it's still perfectly good. Um, but yeah, since we've got the high temp turbine generators... Uh, it would be a waste not to put this here. Definitely sort that out soon. In fact, I might even... I might even clean up the old power plants here and just replace... like, keep, keep the energy beam receivers in place um, so they stay nice and hot. And we can just put uh, to 4 gigawatt generators there immediately. I'm pretty sure it's not that we're not beaming enough power here, it's just that the heat pipes at the end are not getting warm enough. In fact, almost half of them... Well, that's unfortunate. It's pretty disappointing considering I tested this, I thought, thoroughly in the sandbox before posting it into the game. Uh, how's our power now? Accumulator charge is still climbing. Alright, that is definitely about the peak that we're going to get out of this for now. Which, considering our diminishing returns, is not going to be that different. 269... Vit core fragments per second. That's pretty good. Uh, we are 90% full on steam. Just about. And about the same for antimatter stream. This would have been a lot less effective with an ion ship. Uh, even if we did have the high temp turbine generator, which we wouldn't have. But antimatter engines are 10 times more energy efficient. Although the shield projectors are very, very energy thirsty. Um, so maybe we should remove those depending on how it goes. Um, okay. Is all research already done at the moment? Uh, no, absolutely not. In fact, we could do Deep Space Science Pack 3. We could do Factory Spaceship. We could do Antimatter Reactor. I'm not excited about that, to be honest. Just because of... Uh, I, I did a quick test in Sandbox with this. It consumes antimatter way faster than I would expect for what we get out of it. Uh, wide Area Beacon 2 might be nice. We do have some uh, Tier 2 science packs. Where's, where's our lab? There it is. We've got a whopping 32 deep space science packs here. Tier 2, that is. And 1.8k... The productivity bonus is 100%. 109%. So we've actually got, like, almost 
4,000 or 3,600 tier 1 deep space science packs here. Uh, I guess we could knock off... That's only 200, I didn't even notice. Let's do that. I think I do want to go for mining productivity, actually. That affects everything, but Naquitite included. That's going to take a minute. Or rather, it's actually going to go pretty fast with all these labs, but we're going to run out of deep space science packs. Steam is pretty much full. Alright, let's give this thing a test drive. Um, so our target to start with is Vosanus. Let's see how it goes. Launch is disabled. Why is launch disabled? Because we haven't done an integrity check since we got the antimatter stream? There we go. I think we can probably expect about 200 speed from this, judging by our playership. So how fast are we consuming steam? Uh, what the... Why does this one storage tank's contents keep going up? How much power do we have from the solar panels? 16 megawatts? Satisfaction zero watts? What? That's so weird. I think it might be because it's connected to the spaceship clamp or something. But this one shows the actual stats. Uh, most of the time we only need like 10 megawatts or something. So the solar panels are carrying us most somewhat for the moment. Oh wow. This is how quickly we're running out of 5k steam. Okay, but we haven't left the solar system yet. We're getting, like, at least half of our power that we would need from solar panels. Uh, let's see how it goes. What is the name of this ship? Uh, let's just call it something like... That. Where... Only now getting past Soma. What's our speed? 204. Almost exactly what I predicted. I think we're going to get up to like 206, 207 at this rate. Our player ship is like 240. Uh, and it's got the same number of engines. It's a bit smaller. This is actually surprisingly effective. Uh, I f okay, we need to wait until the solar panels drop to 1% to really get a feel for it. But so far, uh, so far I feel like I should have tried this sooner. We haven't had high temp turbine generators available for most of the game, but 5,000 degree steam is actually something we could have made much sooner. Um, unfortunately, it's not possible directly to make 900 degree steam. You actually have to make like two different temperatures and mix it, which is all kinds of 
annoying complications that you can't automate because you can't read the temperature. Um, but I wonder if... I'm sure filling this with 500 degree steam wouldn't get us that far. Especially because ion engines would be our only option earlier on in the game. So we would need... Uh, 5.82 megawatts, 60 steam per second. Let's see. Well, 5.82 megawatts won't run an ion engine. We need at least two, and that's if we want to move only at a crawl, because we won't be able to support our lasers. Uh, let's say we have... Well, learning from our older ships, actually, it's going to be pretty similar. We should probably have six because these were bottlenecked on power. And the more power we're wasting idly on passive consumption, uh, the less far our steam is going to get us as well. So let's say we have six um, uh, steam turbines. That's 360, I think. So... If we were to consume at full power, we would only get 277 seconds, less than 5 minutes. If this was 500 degree steam, and if we were using steam turbines, we'd get less than 5 minutes of, uh, of power for an ion ship that had like one engine and some laser turrets. What was the mod that lets you move buildings without deconstructing? It's called Picker Dollies. Uh, and you just point at things, hold shift, and press the cursor keys. Actually, this should probably be up here, I guess. Um, but yeah, judging by... How do we have 1.2k hot st Oh, there's some in here as well. Cool. We're about to exit the solar system. That's when the real test begins. Solar panel power is about to drop to 1%. And then we'll see just how quickly our steam supply is being depleted. Alright, that's it. Uh, really? Wait, it just went back up. And I'm looking at total fluid system contents. It's kind of hard to get a feel for how fast it's going to go if it does that. But still, uh, oh, we just lost like a hundred. Uh, still, it's looking like it's being consumed very, very slowly. I do, and I do mean very slowly. Uh, we've lost about two tenths of a percent of our total stored hot steam here. Make that three tenths of a percent. And we're already 30% of the way to the nearest star. 
Looks like 5 to 10 per second at most. Yeah, it is... This is shockingly effective. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll even... Maybe I'll even use this, like, a lot in a future playthrough. Might make a few ships that use this in this playthrough, for that matter. Oh, this is kind of a better indicator, because we don't have the XK uh, that doesn't show us the decimals. We can see exactly how quickly we're gaining water. And we get 99% uh, of what comes through there, about 99%, uh, we get back as water. So, yeah, it's just a few water per second. I don't think we're going to have any trouble whatsoever getting... I mean, we could probably go anywhere with this. Maybe add a couple more tanks if we were going to go to Pontus. Maybe. But yeah, uh, this is actually really viable. We've used about 1% of our steam. I might have to play with this some more. Have you fully discovered the universe yet? Uh, no, actually. I keep slacking off on that. Uh, we can put this on hold for a second. I don't know how many times we need to run zone discovery before we run out of destinations. I want to put mining productivity back on the menu. So we're up to 167, 168, or was that 167? And we're still finding locations to look at. Uh, let's look at it from the perspective of Nalvis. Algae, or algae. It's got barrel, it's really big, and it is somewhat, it's kind of far from Nalvis. Nothing special on it. Petra is Holmanite, really tiny, not very far away. Or, or Aurea, Aurea? Uh, super tiny, not that far away. Bandoch is also extremely tiny. Uh, Bluna. Uh, what have we got? Holmanite, no biters, medi medium radius, big for a moon, uh, waterless, and kind of far away. Abaddon, vulcanite, medium size, uh, kind of far away, and lastly for today will be Orlara. Copper. It's, it's a moon what has copper. Hardly any biters, waterless, kind of far away. Alright, nothing too exciting there. Um, but what is kind of exciting is how far we've gone on 2% of our steam. So we can probably estimate it takes about 3,000 steam to get from Nalvis orbit to Vazanis. Um, that being the case, it might be 
I wouldn't be surprised if we ran out of steam if we went to Pontus and back. Um, but that's on four tanks. We could always add more if we wanted to with a different design. We've definitely got room uh, to add some tanks right about here, for example. Uh, but yeah, this is, again, shockingly effective. Okay. Uh, why don't we see who to raid today? Who's streaming Factorio? We've got... Diznoff. I think I've seen him playing like Factorio like twice. Uh, he doesn't need our help though, I don't think. Uh, Seek Death? The factory must grow. Factorio default settings. Oh, that's the speed run. Not a whole lot of people streaming Factorio right now. Alright, I think we'll drop in on Zeke today. Trip to Pontus next weekend then. Uh, I think if I, if I got... Uh, if I had like eight storage tanks, I think we could confidently go to Pontus and back. That that might actually be totally fine. We would the the trouble is as well we need eight storage tanks for water. Um, we could use turbine generators here instead of condenser turbines, but we have to deal with the water output. Most of it is from the high temp turbine generator so there's not a whole lot of point in doing that we may as well conserve the water that we get from this unless at our destination we're going to flash the water to delete it or something um but yeah all right let's give zeke death the raid have a nice evening silent storm thanks for hanging out take care Alright. El Pancho. Fat boy not so slim. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord or Blueprints if you like. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And uh, stay safe. Take care, Chucky. Tinos. Have a good one. They don't seem worth it. There's something I was looking at with the furnaces. It might be worth it with some other things, but definitely not with the furnaces. Hicks, I need your help. It's a T-Rex. Say we take off, nuke the side from orbit.